Howdy, howdy, everybody, and welcome to Counter's Casual Competition number 43, I believe. My name is Kanem, joined by Deadly Ghost today for today's competition. Deadly, how ya doing, huh? Doing very well. Hello, Counter. Thank you for having me. Hello to everyone. Hope you're having a nice start to your Saturday. Hope you will be entertained by us, and uh, I'm very excited for the tournament. So, for anyone who's coming to us for the first time, a quick overview of how things will work today. We'll be having three rounds of play. Our players will randomly be seeded into the first round. And then for the second and third round, they'll be seeded for those lobbies based on their performance. In terms of actual prizes people will be getting from today, uh, the first and second place will both be getting little legend eggs. With another random player getting another little legend egg as well. And from Rick's GG. We have RP prize as well, so please go check them out at RicksGG underscore on Twitter as we're just about to get our first round of play started. So before we do, Deadly, how are you feeling about the meta right now? Well, I'm actually feeling uh, pre pretty nice about the meta. We've seen some changes, especially now with the B patch, where uh, we saw some nerfs to the five cost dragons. So I think we're going to see a few more four cost carries. The eight cost dragons are going to be more uh, prevalent, I believe. Uh, and Corgi hasn't received a nerf for the last few patches, so I still think that he's going to be one of the most prevalent carries of the set. Yeah, I mean. It Based suddenly on my own limited experience, the Corky has been absolutely everywhere and an absolute nightmare to deal with. Plus three is Fort Forklift certified. I do not know what that's referring to, but I'm glad to hear you've been pushing your own employability. I don't know what's going on anymore. Deadly Ghost. But what I do know is we've got our first game up and are ready to start right now. So this is going to be table three. So right now the table numbers don't reflect at all the players' performance because they're coming in completely fresh. But we've got Bizzo and we've got Dogway providing POVs into our first game of the day. Yeah, I'm very excited. Thank you to all of our streamers for providing us uh, uh, their viewpoints. And also thank you for to XGG. Uh, and I'm very excited to see what this first game is going to be bringing out because the first game uh, of a tournament having also participated in, in a few of them myself is always erratic and people are always trying out different things seeing what they can pull off and whatnot so first game is always very fun for me 
but you know, all games are pretty fun but the first one is kind of you know that extra level of uh fun f uh, because you can see what people are thinking maybe someone will go for a comfort uh, for comfort maybe someone will go right off the bat with something crazy so i'm very excited Oh, Adoy, thank you not only for the sub, but also the advice. So I have tweaked the volume on Deadly Ghost. Let me know if that's a little bit more balanced than before. Should have done a sound test. That was my bad. And Blue QT, thank you for the follow as well. We're just about to get things kicked off. It looks like we've got a slight delay on getting started in. So, Deadly, let's talk openers. What's your favorite opener so far, or at least recently? Well, I've always been a fan of the uh, Ezreal with uh, Guardians opener. I still think it's pretty hmm. decent. You can, you don't have to go for a win streak. You can also go on a minor lose streak because uh, you can have Tarek and Leona as uh, your moderate tanks while Ezreal does damage. And uh, you can deal with like uh, one to two unit losses and you can develop a nice losing streak if you want to get first pick on Carousel. And also, if you get like an Ezreal 2 right off the bat, you can still have some pretty decent, uh, some pretty decent uh, winning streak. And also, it can offer a lot a leeway into a few transition transitioners uh, later on because you can go go for Jade. You can have put Lee Sin, and you can maybe transition into some Dragon Mancer comps, maybe some Legend. So I fairly like uh, the openness. Uh, of it. Another comp I like going for is Astros. I think right now Astros are, are still pretty decent even after the nerf and after the removal of the cheeky Astral toggling. You know who you are, those of you who have used it. Mm. I, sti I still think it's nice though for uh, economy buildup. Alright, well as we get things started off, it's worth noting from our first carousel, we did see an awful lot of tears being handed out across our field of play as we do get our early drops in. So, you know, if we're in an environment with a lot of tears, I imagine we are more likely to see, you know, some of these Karma Ezreal, that kind of, you know, spell casting sort of setups coming through from our early picks. Yeah, um, because I saw it, it was something like four or five tier uh, tiers from the first carousel, so... I'm definitely going to be interested in seeing maybe some mages uh, early on, maybe a Karma Dragonmancer hero with a blue buff. That can also be a very nice uh, early comp uh, unit, so... Pardon me. It's definitely going to be interesting uh, seeing what these people go for, and I'm very excited to see these first augments. So Thrill the Hunt being picked up for Bizzle at the top, certainly one of the most generic augments which will work very well throughout the game. That burst healing can work very well when you've got a lot of defensive units. Down the bottom though, we've got some more esoteric choices, let's maybe put it that way, for our friend Let's see. So that's, yes, Dogway down there. Heroic Presence, Cluttered Mine and Rich Get Richer. Cluttered Mine's the most generic of the three, I'd say. And they will be filling up their bench allowing them to start scooting up the XP just a little bit faster than everybody else. Yep, so this tells me that Dogway's uh, probably going to go for an early uh, loss streak, or maybe just um, if they're going for a winning streak, well, they have Double Bruiser and uh, a Jinx in, so uh, they can uh, get a, a winning streak on, but not against uh, a level 4 early on already, but Still, if you go for an early loss streak, we can still build up that, that XP. Your economy buildup will be a, a little uh, weakened because you have to have your board full to get that uh, experience. However, because of the natural gain of XP where you gain 6 instead of 2, I think some level 6 or level 7 uh, comps are going to be uh, much earlier on the board for a dog way rather than someone else. One thing we have noticed coming in for Bizzo, though, as we bring up their view a little bit more fiercely, is they did have a very early drop through of the Nunu, and that's pushed them actually into Electric Overload Mirage. And they've already got a two-star Sejuani to go with that Nunu, so there's a lot of beef on this team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
we see the Cavaliers uh, with the Nunu and the Sejuani. The Sejuani providing the guild bonus of the HP, the double guardians. This is uh, a very interesting comp. It's uh, very heavy early on and also because you have the Electro, the electro Charge uh, Mirage, you're going to deal a lot of damage while you're tanking even more damage. So it's definitely going to be very interesting. And also Electro Charge, if Nunu and Leona get a kill, like the Leona just did now, it's going to be even uh, more of return to... Uh, so this is a tanky comp and I... I'm actually very much li loving this comp because the copious amounts of CC and uh, tanky stats provided from Guardians and Cavaliers can very much play into what uh, Bizzle has planned early on. It does feel like this is going to work very well if people are playing you know, heavy melee comps so they can all get into range for the electric overload, but I do wonder if maybe we start to see comps like, you know, the Idus Corky, where you've got one big tank and everyone else stays well out of the way. Then maybe the electric overload won't get as good value as Bizzo is hoping. Yeah, uh, so Bizzo's comp works, especially against auto attackers and uh, if you stack a lot of crit gloves like Infinity Edges and things like that. But if you have um, maybe some spellcasters like Mages, Electro Charge won't do that much. But I think the Guardian Shield still can make up for it, even so that even if you lose, it's still going to be a minor unit loss, like one or two, instead of a, a full-on 20 and 20 HP dealt to you from uh, one loss. One of the things I'm liking here as well, you know, talking about the Guardian Shields of Bizzo and how resilient their comp is, the Thriller Hunt together with the Cavalier and the early level up from Bizzo, really speaks to yep. a player who's looking to try and make a big impact early on and keep their initial win streak going. Yeah, and this just shows some great game knowledge from Bizzo. He knows he has a strong board, he knows he is tanky. Twitch too early on is just copious amounts of damage and the armor reduction. And so he's looking to build up a, a winning streak. And uh, uh, having the confidence to go level 5 is something you would see out of uh, experience, more experienced TFT players, uh, and just know knowing how how strong their board is, and so I think you would need to have some very nice game recognition uh, and knowledge uh, to properly execute an early level up to level five. Well, Bizzo, looking pretty good so far. We'll keep an eye out for them over on Dogway side of things. Remember, they got the cluttered mind from before. It looks like they are going to be changing up what they are doing. Going for an early death blade. Very heavy nerfs as of the most recent AD changes sweeping across the board. But an eclectic mix. No solid direction, but we've at least got Cannoneer and Rebel and a front line of bruisers. So this is going to be very uh, very interesting. I think I think Dogway is just going for a, a decent sized board early on just so even if they go on a lost streak, uh, that uh, it won't be too too big of a loss uh, but seeing that Nidalee 2 with a death blade he's going to start win uh, win a few more games now he still has that clutter mind and he's slowly building up the econ so it's still okay for now and it is even though death blade got nerfed it's still really nice on Nidalee who scales off with the more AD she has yeah, certainly as a strong early game item. I wonder if Dogway is looking to, you know, to just get the levels in here and then see what drops as we've got so the rich gets richer. So we've got the needlessly big gem being our first shimmer scale item. Certainly not a popular item with some of our players, taking a long time before it really gets its effect in. Yeah, and you have to actually be very mindful of how you use it because if you if your unit gets uh, demolished early on and the needlessly big gem doesn't get to proc then no gold for you no ascension for you and your board is left kind of uh, lackluster so you're going to need to put it on the idas or maybe on some backline unit who is going to be dying uh, last just so you can have it uh, be at least uh, that uh, that much more effective and you can get that ascension 
it also kind of locks you into building up your economy a lot because uh, most Shimmer Scale items stack up with the more gold you have, so it is going to be an economy he uh, heavy game for whoever wants to go uh, Shimmer Scale. Let's see, I believe that was uh, Sid the Cat Girl down at the bottom on 74 who is running through with the extra gold, so we'll keep an eye out. Of course, they may be picking up more rate, uh, more Shimmer Scale items as they do go through, time of traits being floated there as well, so there's some power lurking in what our players are doing. But for Bizzo, they're the only player undefeated. They are front and center. They're not hiding anything. No. And Bizzo is continuing to build up this board. A nice win streak going. Economy is getting built up fairly nicely. I see some items with, uh, which could definitely go on to the Twitch. There's a Leona, there's a Thresh. This board is starting to look fairly nice for, uh, for Bizzo and... Oh wow, he just leveled up to level 6 and he has the double scale score in. Okay, win streaking galore coming out of uh, Bizzo. He wants to keep that win streak going, he wants to uh, eliminate as much uh, of the other player's HP as he can. What makes this particularly interesting as well is that we can see Giant Slayer being thought about to be played here. Not actually going to end up being slammed. It's a little bit of indecision from Bizzo. They can see right now they are, you know, they're a level ahead of the competition. So they don't have to make the kind of final decisions on items to continue winning rounds. But one thing I wanted to put to you here is we've almost got a situation where Giant Slayer for Bizzo is almost a healing item because it's going to allow for the for the unit which is carrying it to get kills and therefore thrill the hunt procs much more easily. Yes, uh, and I also think that he is uh, uh, probably deciding on whether to put on the uh, the Giant Slayer or the, or the Bloodthirster because both are extremely uh, strong uh, strong items for um, for the Twitch. And I'm going to wait up as we see our second round of augments because there are some interesting ones. So down, yes, oh. down at the bottom for Dogway, we've got the much more generic ones. The Us Grab Bag comes in for Bizzo, which would give them access to another Cavalier Spatula if they were so inclined. Though it's, maybe they've got something else in mind. Could be a further dip into Mirage. About, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about the Mirage emblem going on because you have, you now have Abram, the sec your second guardian with Electro Charge. And if you if he decides on the Yone, it's going to be a four Mirage, so an increased chance of the of of the prog but i think three cavalier maybe beats out for mirage just a little bit early on and so bizzo goes for the rage blade which i think is just still a very very nice item uh twitch gets a lot of extra attack speed gets the proc uh, the spell early on and you already see uh those procs uh of thrill and the uh, and electro charge help, helping out quite a bit yeah, I mean, it worked right then. I'm not sure I'm pers- like, While the Twitch is definitely very good at the two-star, I think once the Yone hits two-star themselves, I'd love to see that coming in, just because right now, I think, if anything, Twitch might be doing too good of a job of killing stuff from the back line. He's actually eating a lot of the Thrill of the Hunt procs instead of the front line who actually need them. Yeah, no... Uh we saw Nunu get two two kills there, and the rest of them were killed by Twitch. But Twitch somehow was getting focused a little bit in, in the beginning. Uh, I think a Karma spell got uh, hit him, so it's still okay. But coming back to your point, yes, Twitch is a dearly item holder. I think it's going to be a Yone or maybe a Deja later on who's going to be getting those Twitch items. Uh, but I think if Bizzo can get to a Yone too. That's going to be the four Mirage, and if you can put out uh, Yone with some healing on, Yone can also uh, heal a lot of damage while still dealing a lot even from the Electro Charge procs. And I think as a unit, Yone scales a lot better into the late game because he offers that a lot, that extra bit of magic damage on hit, which is fairly unique uh, for uh, for him. This. 
one thing I want to to come off again for a second to go back down to Dogway. Something you notice coming in very briefly, and I think we've seen this from Bizzo as well, that they're active. You can actually see their thought process going on by the way they manipulate their comps around. Is the Dogway. Oh, um, no, maybe, maybe I misinterpreted what was going on here. So we've got a good amount of Astral coming in for Dogway. And we could be in a position where we had six Astral running. But if that was the case before, it's certainly not the case right now. I think, uh, I think Dogway was just playing Astral, uh, with the intention of, uh, what I, what I said at the beginning, like, uh, have three, three Astrals in just to build up, uh, some economy a little bit. Oh, that's an army too. Oh, those items are not, are not good at all for Nami. From the no. TG. Dogway is on a losing streak though, so I guess it's probably okay. Up against a Losen, I believe. Uh, yes, who has... So they would very likely be happy to go into Astral. They've got themselves Trade Sector and Rich got Richer, which neither of which are Combat Augments, but both of which will allow you to put together a very strong comp eventually. Yes, yeah, so both Economy Augments, uh, Rich Get Richer gets you this uh, 70 gold uh, max, so automatically 7 income. And Trade Sector is just extremely uh good for building an early an early game comp and even later on it can be very nice also trade sector working with astral is uh, a very a very nice combo you can uh i don't i don't like using the word abuse but because it sounds like you're doing something terrible it's just i would say uh utilize hmm i think i think that's fair you know, they're definitely in the set, there are certain setups where if you've got them, then you're massively more inclined to go for, you know, in this case, Astral. If you don't have them, then you need to, you know, have a really narrow window opportunity. For Average Tryhard, though, who I believe has actually got the Essence Theft, if I'm eyes don't deceive me, yes. which will allow them to have their Evokers stealing mana. They've got what I can't, we're expecting to see a whole bunch of, which is cannoneers? Yes, we see we see cannoneers. The evoke the essence theft. So now we their evoker steal mana. Uh, Nomzi got hit with some nerfs right now, so you're actually forced to go for uh, trainers. Basically, Nomzi's HP got uh, got it almost almost nearly half at level one, mm. but she does get more HP per stack. So I did the math. You would need about 35 stacks for it to even out and then every uh cookie after 35 uh is uh an hp increase so basically if you want to play namzi you have to stack three uh trainer it does feel that what the way certainly at least to get to the point where you can break even again i i do want to check in with bizzo though who is still on the win streak from the very beginning of the game and they've got themselves another spatula and the cavalier emblem we we're talking about before could very much come in here that's a massive increase of defenses with cavalier five now being added in good lord and we see a deja oh wow five cavalier you have five uh you have six Mirage. Uh, he brought it down to four Cavalier just to have uh, a six Mirage. But now you can basically theory craft a, a lot of this, a lot of this board. And I think uh, you can just later on remove the Cavalier spat from from Brom or just remake Brom and put if you're going for eight Mirage, put it on Yasuo and have Yasuo be your Cavalier. And because of the natural tankiness of Yasuo with the shielding, he's going to be extremely strong and deal a lot of damage to the board. And every charge that Cavaliers do actually doubles the amount of resistances they get for mm. four or five seconds. I forgot uh, how much it was. I think it's four. So eh, this is going matter. to be very interesting. Well, I suppose as well, this feels like this all really coheres very closely together for Bizzo. If we talked about the Thriller Hunt, you know, the you know, a like, augment which is amazing if you're, you know, if you're getting those early kills in to help you win the rounds more. 
We've got the Cavaliers, who are very much the same kind of thing. Yeah, if you get kills, they're charging, they're getting more defenses. And then we've got Best Friends. No, sorry, not Best Friends coming in, but Sunfire, Sunfire. coming in instead. How do you feel like that ties up with the rest of what Bizzo's doing? Well, it's a, just another layer of damage because you have Electrocute Charges, which is going to deal damage. You have uh, Deja, Deja's Waves, you have Sunfire Border dealing a lot of a lot of damage and the inherent tankiness of five cavaliers is going to be extremely strong and usually when you play nunu you would put on uh, some fire some fire cape on on him just to have some of that uh, chinese nunu tech but now with some fireboard you're free to, to do uh, other things like put put in a warmox he was hovering over the redemption so it's going to be interesting, but still, having an Ao Shin on blue side is going to be extremely strong. And I believe that's blue we're seeing playing with yes. the two boxes which aren't rendering properly on our clan because they are in Korean. Uh, I don't know if they are Korean themselves, but they certainly their username seems to be. Uh, and I suppose we are getting into the era for Bizzo. Even on a 12 round win streak, yeah, we're getting into the area where people's comps are starting to manifest these dragons, which are very much, you know, backline centric damage, where the, you know, where this electric mirage can't directly reach them until the front line collapses. Uh, oh, it's our two streamers. This is going to be together. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Dogway has transitioned into uh, Zaya and uh, Shio Yu. So this is actually very interesting. Yeah, this, this is, is to... this is hugely different from what they were doing before. The, uh, they still have the clutter mind and uh, I think Dogway is going to be uh, rolling uh, pre pretty quickly. I think a few maybe uh, up until Treasure Dragon. Uh, if they can uh, keep their uh, their HP bar below uh, above zero, but other than that, this is going to be an interesting board because if you get that Shio Yu too, if you get more of those Jades in, if you get a Soraka in, uh, Dogway's board can be fairly strong because you already have the Zaya too with the Rage Blade and the Death Blade. Alright, so we've got Sim the Cat Girl out in 8th. An unfortunate game for them. But it looks like we've got ourselves a big swathe of players around the same kind of HP. You know, the top 3 looking relatively healthy. Certainly in the case of Bizzo and Average Tryhard. G4 down to 50 and then everybody else in the 20s. So, you know, Bizzo, an oppressive presence here in this game. They've really, you know, put so much pressure down onto everybody else in the lobby. Bizzo with the massive win streak of actually uh, not even losing one whole round. And we see a copycat on Bizzo's side. Someone is uh, basically playing the same comp as he is. This is actually getting pretty interesting. But yeah, I think, yeah, G4U... Uh, G4 is basically playing the same comp and they have uh, a Deja 2, which is uh, kind of sad for a bit for Bizzo and uh, the Yasuo, but I still think that other elements of uh, Bizzo's board are stronger. So I think I, I can still see him uh, pull off the victory here. This is really interesting for me. You know, certainly I, you know, I've seen Mort Dog and a few other people running the electric overload and doing well with it but i didn't realize it was enough of a high priority that it would draw multiple players to play it yeah so i think uh, it's helped quite a bit by the thrill and the sunfire board being uh, extremely prevalent and also having a cavalier's path and also a mirage path very much helps around because your nunu becomes a lot more tankier you have that extra mirage so you can go for eight the Mirage. So it's just a lot of uh, helping out uh, from the augments. And Dogway, he had that Soraka in his shop, but he's not going for it. Uh, Dogway is uh, in their dog days. 
we've noticed before, you know, they've gone for the Zaya combination here with Shio Yu, ending up with too many AD items, I suppose, to go for the more traditional Anivia. It is working relatively well, though, despite, you know, Zaya taking a major hit recently, like dropping down from being pretty much everywhere to almost not seen anymore at all. Yeah, so Zaya uh, used to be the best uh, forecast carry. I would, I think it's not, I think it's not controversial to say that she was like that at the beginning of the set. I think uh, now she needs some help, another another uh, carry in the form. Well, you have in the form of Shio Yu, and you have Twitch to lower those and the armor of everyone on the board. So Zaya is kind of primed uh, right now to succeed because you have a strong front line in the form of Nico and R, those shapeshifters, and also Shio Yu inherently gets some tankiness. So Zaya, while nerfed, I still think that she can be a decent carry right now. It's just that she needs more time to ramp up and deal that extra bit of damage that she used to have uh, earlier on. Well, we do have to roll down from our friend El Doggo, and we'll be rewarded by the Shio Yu going up to two stars, so that will be some extra time bought for the Zaya, as you say, to keep the damage going. Unfortunately, Shio Yu doesn't have a lot in terms of damage herself. Going to be going up against the second Mirage player in the lobby. You see, the itemization for, I believe it's G4 here for the Deja, a lot of long-term threat, but maybe not as enough short-term threat as they're going to get overrun, and Dogway keeps on rolling. No, the itemization for for that Deja is not optimal for uh, because I think out of the Archangel and the Morellonomicon, you only need one for Deja. The other the other uh, item should be a Rage Blade because unless you have Duelist, you actually need that extra attack speed on the Deja, and you see. Bizzo with a much better utilization of items for Deja, uh, Rage Blade, uh, Archangels, and uh, the Giant Slayer. So it's definitely going to be uh, interesting to see uh, how G4 will do. And also, I think Morel Namicon is has now dropped a little bit in, uh, in importance, especially after the nerf to the AP on it. Mm. Yes, yeah, so it's gone from being absolutely everywhere to probably being relatively balanced. Keep your eye out on Abizzo, of course. Abizzo, having remained undefeated since the beginning of the game, is still looking very strong. Up against Dogway here. Dogway, I think it's marginal if they could get knocked out in this round. Depends how it goes. Of course, Thrill of the Hunt for Abizzo will start snowballs if it goes off. But it looks like Zaya's damage is actually going to be good enough. And they might even hand Bizzo their first loss. I think it is. Bizzo, no longer undefeated. Yeah. Shio Yu uh, had a decent proc uh, of items there from the Thieves' Gloves. You had titan Titans and also an, uh, an Archangels. Which, and Archangels is uh, a decent item on uh, Shio Yu because, because it, pro uh, it increases the damage reduction Shio Yu gets from, uh, from uh, the, their spell. So mm. that's, that was actually a nice proc of the damage reduction. And uh, not having Deja 2 was detrimental, I think, for uh, for Bizzo, because a Deja, a Deja 2 is uh, exponentially much better than the Deja 1. So Dogway now has uh, a way back into the game. Alright, so Bizzo going to try and fight the way back into their winning ways. We'll see if the rest of the lobby has officially caught up with them. We noted before, G4's Deja... It's taking a long time to cast when it does. Unfortunately, even with the Giant Slayer and the Archangels together, it's not able to overcome the ridiculous level of resistances these Cavaliers can put out. I'm sorry. That, I think G4 just remade that Deja because that used to be a two-star Deja and now it is a one-star. They swapped out the Morella Namicon for a Giant Slayer, but... I didn't see it do that that much for uh, for G4 that round, so definitely interesting uh, that they so sold the Deja 2 and for a 1-star. 
Yeah, that's really, really fascinating. I was starting to doubt my evidence of my own senses, but I think you're absolutely right. Uh, we have got Alosan out as well as Krennen, so we're down to our top five. Of course, our point structure for today is eight for first, one for last. But hitting into the top four is almost essential in a tournament, which is as short as this one is, only three rounds long. Of course... If you do well in the first round, that can be tricky because you will go up against other players who've done the same thing in their own lobbies. But if you want to win the entire thing, then you really do need to be hitting at least the top four in your first game. Yeah, every every uh, placement is important, I think. And going into top four, I, I would say that even top three is uh, extremely important because while you do get uh, put against uh, better players, you still need those top three placements if you want to have a shot at actually winning the game. Dogway will not be one of those players, though. Taking the big hit from the big dragon on campus. That is first Alshin. I think we've seen on stream eliminating someone. Oh, no. Dogway is out of there to take a break. So we will switch to exclusively Bizzo Vision for the rest of this game. Down to our top four. We've got the two Mirages in. We have got the two-star Deja re-emerging for G4, as you noted. Getting reconstituted. You know, what are your thoughts coming into the late game here, Ghost? You know, who are you liking the most? Is it still Bizzo from the early win streak? So, if Bizzo can get that Deja to two-star, I think it is going to be... Uh... It is going to be instrumental for uh, for their wins, but I think that is uh, blue with the Eoshin. So uh, I'm liking blue's chances uh, right now much more than anyone else for a for a top finish. But I also think that Bizzo is still probably in the front running despite taking a lot of them uh, taking a loss here because of that massive winning streak and because they went. Uh, without a loss up until uh, I think Treasure Dragon, something like that. So they now have 80 gold and they're going to be going to level 9, so I expect to see that 8 Mirage, 5 Cavalier, maybe a Deja 2. And very well, exciting to see. G4 has just been eliminated the other Mirage player, so that Deja 2 should almost be a guarantee at this point, you'd think. I mean, Bizzo is fairly close to level 9, but another concern we haven't even addressed yet is that Average Tryhard just found Shivana 2. So I think we're going to end up with a pretty dramatically different looking late game matchup than we were expecting. Yeah, so I didn't think that people were going to be going for that many 5-cost five, uh, five dragons because, because of the nerves. However, having a Shivana 2 who didn't get that much nerf only shivana uh, one star got uh, got uh, uh nerf because she she was a bit too strong but shivana 2 is still a very strong unit now and those items are extremely good on her you have the innate tank and tankiness of the gargoyles paired uh, paired up with uh, with the archangels and the death cap and she's going to be healing a lot as well as dealing a lot of damage and that is smart placement by Bizzo because he wants to delay that dragon's descent as much as he can. Yeah, those few precious seconds of Bizzo allowing them to get their danger up and stacking a lot more than it would be otherwise. I'm not sure it's going to get them the round one, but it should soften the loss somewhat. You can see that Bizzo with an Aoshin on bench presumably has got it in mind they're actually going to get out of Mirage and maybe into something a little bit more electric. I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking that he, uh, he's just holding it for Blue to not get a two star. Oh, uh, that would make sense. Yeah, so I'm, I'm thinking, oh, he is now rolling for the three star Deja. It would be massive if he can get, if he can get it, and he's putting on Bard just to have uh, that extra bit of. Uh, shot for uh, for getting the Deja 3 and again smart placement on on the Zephyr because now Eoshin is going to be delayed in that cast extremely extremely long and the Deja can still do massive amounts of damage and so Bizzo 
is while he's still trying to complete his comp, the smart Zephyr placement is probably saving him 10 to 12 HP per round. Yeah, I didn't even realize that Blue wasn't up to Aoshin 2. You can see Bizzo is not happy about Blue's current win streak and current item. Do you have the two star Yasuo coming in? So, presumably, as you said before, we'll be seeing the changeover of items to allow for Yasuo to become a Cavalier themselves. Money, though, is pretty much out here for Bizzo. I think dreams of hitting the three star JJ surely have to be abandoned at this point. Uh, it's also a bit a bit sad that he got contested fairly early on by G4 because uh, you, you see he's still struggling to get that to, to get that uh, Nunu 3 star go, uh, going on well he, the Zephyr is on the Corky so it's still a, pri a prime target that has been uh, temporarily disabled from from the game but that Shivana 2 just melts your whole team and Bizzo is uh, slowly on uh, his another way out of this uh, game for now. Yeah, it feels like Bizzo, despite doing so well so early, now has to live in a world where you know average tryhard is almost unkillable. Blue, you know, is winning rounds with the Aoshin one. You know, the idea of having to then face down an Aoshin two, I can definitely see why Bizzo would want to try and avoid that. But it feels like they're just delaying the inevitable at this point. Yeah, I would very much like to see uh, Bizzle because uh, change up uh, the Cavalier's path and put it on the Yasuo because you already have uh, a Braum 2 on your bench. So you can just trade off the, the Cavalier's path to Yasuo, put in the Mirage and the Frozen Heart onto uh, Braum again and just have... Uh, your Yasuo will be as tanky as possible because those knockups can prov can provide a lot of help for uh, uh, for your Deja. And we saw him hover. We we saw him thinking about going going for that uh, Aoshin too. Oh boy, yeah. Bizzo has now officially abandoned the grief train. Not trying to keep Blue from the door because they need to worry about getting killed by average tryhard. And Bizzo. We'll see what happens in the other game being played, but they are out. And it looks like Blue held on as well, which means that Bizzo, from going undefeated early on, ends out in third. And it's all about the dragons in the late game. Yep, it is all about the dragons. And funnily enough, we have double trainer going up against each other so now Namzi with that hell uh with the health stacking uh buff later on is definitely doing well in these lobbies right now and Corky I I said at the beginning that it, it is going to be a, a very nice carry and he is proving to be a good carry but also the Shivana being extremely strong uh right now is helping out uh, average tryhard quite a bit there's a knock up i'm always keeping my eye out for the shivana targeting because it is always a little bit suspicious where she ends up throwing a lot of her damage the Aoshin, though yeah just can't deal with the raw tankiness i love the item set there as blue gets knocked out you know you've got you got tankiness you've got damage you've got an unstoppable force of nature but that will bring that game to an end. We don't have a ton of streamers here today, so I don't know if we're going to be able to bring you another lobby. I've seen that results are coming in from nearly everywhere else already, which suggests that the games, if they aren't done, are very close to being done. So in that case, we will take ourselves... Oh, no! The Doys letting us know they are still going. In which case... Let's yeah. see if we can find their stream and drop in on their lobby, because I was almost certain that we would be enough from everyone. But let's go take a look. Dermadidi, as they are known. Uh, oh, they're, they're in the top three still playing. Nice. Yeah, we have... Interesting, I'm, uh, I'm seeing star color. Oh, so we have... Uh, we have... Uh, an Idis going around, and of course a Corky. 
It's interesting that the gem is also the first shimmer skill item here as well. Hmm. It doesn't seem to have been enough to put Adoy off of going for the comp though, even though, yeah, by the time 15 seconds are up, I imagine that most of your board is going to be dead anyway. It could also, uh, with the innate tankiness of uh, Idas and the double, the, and now having uh, Guardians in, uh, it can still be fairly tanky. Idas also heals up from the spell, so the innate tankiness from Idas may prove to be beneficial, especially when your carries are mostly in the back line. And the only person dealing with them is a Yasuo who doesn't have that many that many items, but that Deja could prove to be fatal from Fatality Gaming. One thing I'm noticing is Fatality does get knocked out there is the way the targeting was working for the Deja. So while Idis was alive, Deja was firing through Idis and hitting Corky, but not doing really enough damage to you know take mm. Corky out. The second that Idis died. They just started actually shooting at the Sona side of the board and then completely ignored Corky for the rest of the round. Yeah, I think it was one of those cases of uh, this is uh, in in the auto attack proximity, so I think that's what happened there. But I don't know. Maybe you can call it fault faulty targeting. Uh, blame it on more dog. I don't know. I don't mean. I'm not. I'm not saying it's <laughs> as you know as a yeah, yeah, as much as it's a. An interesting point of the positioning that adoy has got right now that's worked really well. Now, a big problem, of course, mm. for your solo tanks is that when they get zeppered up, you are left in a very awkward position. Alvin doing exactly that. They've even got a Soraka on the back line with the Archangels. Game killer, Bia. Welcome to the stream. We are in round number one, and we're just checking out one of our secondary lobbies. Uh, so most of our games are done in round one, but this is, I believe, the last one still going. And we've got two titans against each other, Elven and Adoy, with one hell of a board. I mean, you know, if you're in Adoy's position here, and you know that Idis is going to be getting knocked up again and again, how are you dealing with that? I think you're probably going to be putting another unit in, um, just to compensate for the lack of frontline. Maybe, maybe try and... Uh, and uh, put Nomsi in, or because Bart has that Guardian uh, emblem, maybe put in Bart a little bit in the front, have him cast once, and then if he dies, he dies. You already have that extra bit of uh, damage and uh, damage amplification uh, used up. But you also want ba uh, Bart to cast multiple times just so you can get those extra units. So I don't know. I think it's still. You put Bart on the front line because he has that. Well, now he has tri uh, <laughs> triple tankiness items, so you definitely want him on the front line. But you also want him to use that uh, shield uh, shield on your back line as well. So, uh, yeah, right. Namzi probably Namzi because of the HP stacking. Last second switch through. Let's see if that means that Ida stays alive, and it looks like they will. I see a Doi and Blue were both saying to put Jinx on the front line. Didn't ultimately end up happening in the end, but it worked out well enough. We've got ourselves a much more even fight. The back line is staying intact. Corky is nice and healthy, secured away. The ascension kicking in from the needlessly big gem means that Elvin, without getting a knock up onto Idas, they're having a tremendously harder time, and they'll take the big L. That is just half of the remaining HP bar gone. <laughs> that is, I think. Elvin is two losses away from uh, ending up second place, but now that Yasuo is a two-star, so maybe we can see a, tur a turnaround. But yeah, you have uh, Nomzi uh, clearly having more than 35 uh, cookie and cookies uh, fed to her because she's already uh, up up into that four-star uh, area, so. Definitely probably around 3000, 3500 HP, so fairly tanky. And also, uh, her spell still deals a lot of damage if you have uh, if you have triple trainer in. Uh, if you have two, it still, it still deals a, a, a nice amount of damage. 
And I like that uh, Adoy put Idas into the background just to allow the ascension to come in. And you clearly see it working, so Adoy knows what they're doing. Yeah, you see Elvin was saying close there in the chat. They definitely had anticipated that particular move, which is a nice one. Yeah, absolutely with you there. That the, it makes a lot of sense to try and, you know, keep Idas in a little bit more of an unpredictable spot. Elven down to 10 HP. It's seeming like their road has been run. There's going to be one last trick left in. That step is going to be moved. The Idis will be moved as well. The front line is certainly not where you, where you would expect it to be. Will the Zephyr will land? It will. It will land on Idis, but Namzi just fired off a very nice ultimate into the whole backline of Elven, so... It's going to be different. I think not uh, positioning Corky behind your Idas can be a bit of a detriment to you because if your Idas is, uh, has been Zephyred, your Corky is going to become the next target. So that it's a little bit of, of mispositioning on the Doi side and Elvin uh, utilizing that, uh, that Zephyr properly. All right, all right. So Elvin did find the way through. Adoy picking up themselves as Zeke's compared to the Infinity Edge favored by Elvin. Presumably, that's going to mean that the Yasuo is going to start hitting a little bit harder. Uh, Game of Killer, the insane Zephyr. Yeah, I think from our players we got playing here, there's an enormous amount of mind games running. As you know, Adoy can always make their last second changes. And I don't think Elvin's in a position where they can afford to sell off their Zephyr Hollow, which I believe is a Nar, and repurpose them. So it's going to go back to a front line instead. Last second change will be made. Yeah, so the... Oh, Namzi is going to be elevated. elevated. So yeah, you're going to see Idas uh, tank up all of that damage. And I also think that putting... Uh, Idas right in front of your carries uh, is another mistake because of the innate AoE that a lot of Jade units have. So this this is actually much smarter from Adoy, and you can already see him uh, winning the game. All right, what a hell of a round there. So that will be our last results from this round coming in, I do believe. So we will start our next round pretty much straight away once we got those final results in so again we'll be having three rounds across the course of today let's just come back to our beautiful faces for a second wow uh so Adoy, my hp let me misplay one zephyr there i mean that's the advantage isn't it you know when you are ahead in the lobby you've got the chance to you know take these bigger risks and they only need to pay off a single time or in this case a couple of times and then you get the win anyway yeah, I think I think we had sim uh, similar things happening with Adoy and uh, Bizzo, and I think Adoy was going for a uh, win streak at the beginning as well. They probably had uh, had one because that was a fair bit of HP uh, left. It was around sixty something, and we were already past uh, Treasure Dragon and uh, into I think it was Rift Herald. So, mass uh, well played for um, for Adoy for getting that early win streak. And being able to complete that board with the Idas, with the Corky 2, being able to just massively step up. Alright, so let's make sure. I'm just going to be putting in some results myself, being reliant on the players. And oh, Elvin, thank you for the follow. Good job on that second place. That was a hell of a late game to try and get our teeth into. So let's see Fatality coming in third, and Noku coming in fourth means that's our final results in from round one so i'm going to set off round two hopefully everything's working and i'll let everybody know that that's the case because once we'll give them a we'll give them five minutes or so to be able to get the lobby sorted out and then we'll have our next round for you guys so uh round two pairings are live and let's give them to let's give them to half past to get their lobby started 
Uh, so we will take ourselves a short break to get set up for that eventuality. So let's see, that's going to be six minutes from now. We'll catch you guys on the other side of the break for round number two.
Welcome one, welcome all back to Counters a Casual Competition. We are back on stream, and we are about ready to get into round number two. So we've got all of our lobbies done. Uh, a quick overview of who came first in each one. Of course, we saw Adoy ourselves, Yurka in table two, uh, Average Tryhard in table three, and XY Storm in table four. Uh, now we're heading on to our next tables of play. Uh, we've actually got ourselves a few new faces to see live on stream. Let's head across there right now for game number two. Well, that's going to be fairly interesting. Uh, I love seeing new faces all all the time, and uh, I'm going I'm going to be uh, very excited to see what what happens in this in this next game and whether we will see the corky prevalence i mean it seems pretty likely i mean let's check out what we've got early on so d wolf having a very early drop on the lulu that would certainly encourage any person to go towards trainer with quite some speed you mentioned that you know three trainer is almost necessary nowadays to get over that initial nomsy weakness that's a lot easier to do when you've got a lulu immediately yeah Lulu immediately, uh, you, Heimer and Heimer being a one cost is fairly uh, easy to get. Uh, oh, that's a Diana and an Olaf. That could be a skill. Oh boy, D Wolf has got some choices to make, and it looks <laughs> like that choice is going to be scale score. They've got it right now. Having a laugh from the beginning of the game is too tempting to refuse. One thing that D Wolf doesn't have though is nearly any items at all. Well, I think that could be a detriment early on, but moving forward, you can still get a lot of items, and because they have so many units, now you can already see the uh, the ten the ten gold on the board. So already building up that economy. And in terms of items, those two are pretty decent to have on their own. Prismatic will be the augment choice to start us off with. New Recruit is certainly the most generic of the three, and that's what D Wolf ends up going with to go with that other stuff. Let's take a look around. I I think we had this player come on before, and he still had no idea how to say her name. Kara Hua, I guess. Ray Hua? I, not, I don't even know where to start. Kareikwa? Kareikwa, maybe? We, we can, bless you, we can ask them uh, how to pronounce. Uh, their, na their name uh, but yeah this is an interesting board we're seeing a double shimmer scale i think if we see the the atrox we're going to be seeing a shimmer scale board early on coming in so this is going to be a very interesting you already have the bruisers as well so the extra hp is coming in and uh, oh dogway had cruel pact oh gosh i've done, i've nearly never seen cruel pact so the changes to that being the you can now go up to level six straight away, and you'll now re you while you pay more HP for your XP than you used to, you are also regenerating. So it's not as not as high risk, high reward as it was before. But what what's your thoughts on it, Ghost? Are you a are you a packed attendee? Are you down to throw your HP down the drain? Well, seeing as I abused it to a first place a few days ago. Oh, I think really? So. Sorry, I, I utilized it, I should uh, <laughs> say. Well, t tell us yes. about it then. You know, how, what's the kind of overall strategy there? Because presumably, you know, one of the big problems for it before was it's very hard to get up to level 8, level 9, because you couldn't, you know, at some point you can't afford to buy XP anymore. Yeah, you basically need the Soraka to, uh, to uh, get you through, uh, through the late game. But, but now, because you get some HP back, uh, it is going to be much easier. So now the thing you do is you go to level six and you can't go to level seven because uh, you would basically die. So you go to level six, you wait until you can get a little bit of that HP uh, back in. Uh, you level up then to level seven, but basically you can build up a level six to level seven. So two, two star, three star board is uh, something you can go for fairly early on. This windfall choice from Korea, uh, Korea, whoever, 
I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of this one myself. T only 20 gold into the bank does mean they're hitting their interest thresholds a lot faster, but I think unless they actually get a Shimmer Scale comp going, having this early gold, I don't know if it's going to make a difference. They're searching for the Aatrox, I think, to get the Shimmer Scale live, but they are not fun yet. They took nearly all their gold to actually get there. At least they have got themselves a decently strong Shimmer Scale first item, so we'll see if Molly Bear can do the job. We're going to see right here, head in the hands a little bit, worried about where things are going to be going. If this Molly Bear does start getting kills, though, the money will start flowing like wine. You can get an enormous amount per round. I think we might have lost my co-caster for a minute, so hopefully... They'll Hello? be back soon. Oh, there you are. Hello. How are you doing? Yes. So, I'm sorry. My internet decided to go slightly boom on me. That's right. You came back pretty quick. Uh, so nothing to report here. Pop and Quay here. Managing to hit through to the staff, the Goldmancer staff. So the Shimmer Scale gamble they took by picking up Windfall straight away just about paid off, though it took a little bit more gold to get than they would have liked. Well... No, that that can always be um, be a problem uh, for you. Uh, but oh, it's, uh, let's yes, just I need pop to by reconnect. Uh, okay. Oh, you need to reconnect to the parsec. Okay. Yes. Uh, I'm just gonna pop by Yucca's stream. Just let them know that they've got a good quarter of their screen covered. Uh, with the YouTube with... video, yes. <laughs> uh, I don't know if Yucca's reading the chat. Uh, actually, no, I think I'll, I'll, I'll poke them on Discord. Uh, I imagine that's going to be a little bit more reliable. But uh, Yerke has the Whisper's Heart. Oh, they heart. had us. Nice. So that's a Whisper's Heart, and uh, uh, Yerke already has the Elise going. So this is one of uh, the comms that I like to use uh, uh, on this patch, on these last two patches, because... Siphon and uh, Elise got a nice buff out of the Whisper buffs as well because you now get more AD and HP per attack and uh, spell cast. So it is going to be very interesting to see if uh, Yorka will continue on to the late game to maybe try to go for eight Whispers. Uh, <laughs> Oh wait, sorry. That's a, that's a, that was a whisper hard on the on the, his opponent. It was a TG. Yes, so that means we're going to have a contested whisper lobby where presumably hitting at least three is not going to be straightforward at all. Blue, who is undefeated right now, uh, with a little bit of a grab bag of the strongest units I think they could put together, uh, and second wind as well. I think this could be the end of the line here. Whispers, of course, doing very well in these longer rounds, and these early rounds will tend to be pretty long. Very interesting of the game to to put up the, the two uh, undefeated uh, undefeated people against each other. So Yerka going to end the Blue's winning streak and remain as the only person at 100 HP. And I'm starting to see Oh some, boy. Uh, I'm starting to see some interesting uh, units going around. All right, well, yes, so we've got a strong setup here, Adoy. Yes, almost certainly, Yucca yeah, looking to hide their secrets. Uh, the So let's keep scooting around and checking in with how things are going. So we've got D-Wolf here, who did find that incredibly early Olaf. I imagine that we're going to be seeing that Olaf being put across the left-hand side. There we go, to get the extra kill through. So we can see D-Wolf... One of the things we were worried about for them was their items, because they didn't get very much in that respect. They got loads of units and loads of gold to start off with, but their items were not particularly strong. They've got the chance to make an Assassin's Patch if one does come their way, but we don't otherwise have a ton of amazing itemization options here for the Olaf. No, Maybe not really. To change. But... Maybe, but I still think that uh, Hodge is one of the better items you can put on an Olaf or on a Diana, so it 
still decent items for now, but they definitely want that spatula to come through so that they can make that uh, Assassin's Pad Olaf, which I believe everyone who plays TFT has suffered at least once from it. Oh, and for sure. You're... You already have now. You can have an Infinity Edge, you can uh, go for Morellos, you can go for uh, Archangels on something if you want to. So definitely, we definitely have some uh, some itemizing options. You already see the Olaf with the Infinity Edge going to deal massive amounts of damage for now. So we see now Dewolf uh, slowly getting those I those items through. Up against Kreihua, of course, our Shimmer Scale player for Lobby, or presumably Shimmer Scale player for Lobby. Let's we'll see if the Volley Bear is able to pop some gold out of these units of D-Wolf. The fully stacked uh, Titan Resolve certainly is going to help in that respect, but I'm sure they'd love to be able to pick up a needlessly large rod to also get themselves online with a Quincy's Rage Blade. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. Uh, but wait a second, what have we got going on here? Is this the dog way with a extremely early? Uh, I will say the danger actually coming in. Sorry, I, the reason I'm kind of confused there is I realized that Dogway is playing this lobby, and presumably that means we can we can have an extra stream going on, and we can see their POV. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so we've got we've got D Wolf, uh, D Wolf, Dogway, and Crayhua. It's wait. So is Yurka actually? No, Yucca's not in this lobby. My bad. <laughs> I was going to say, this is very confusing. So, sorry. We were doing a lot of switching around of POVs to try and make sure we had the best amount for this game number two. So, there we go. Apologies there. That was very confusing. But now we've got our three players who are actually in this lobby. So, Dogway, we can now go and check in on them. Uh, so... Yes, so they have got, they're the Cruel Pact player, and they've got an extremely early Deja. Well, Deja with an Archangels and uh, a Rage Blade. So this is going to be a very interesting lobby. And uh, we have six, uh, six Mirage already going in, and that's Electrocute uh, once again. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of Electrocutes coming through so far today, as I'm... I just noticed the Doi and Elvin having a little scrap in the chat. Love to see it. I mean, one of the big things, of course, about the casual competitions, you know, the reason for them to exist is for all these fine folks who know each other before, or hopefully get to know each other across the course of these tournaments. They get a chance to have a little bit more of a relaxed entry to the competitive field where winning isn't as important. So hopefully it gets, you know, it's a little bit easier to get into the competitive vibe without having to jump right in the deep end. I very much love the competitive banter. Oh my! Oh, come on! <laughs> now that is one of those lucky rolls that you're looking for. And that is a Deja 2 at level 7. And that is also best friends. So that Deja is going to get some attack speed and armor. And you know what's great for Electric Overlord? Extra armor. Sorry, I said Overlord instead of Overload. That's fine. I didn't even notice. <laughs> but what I am noticing is this two-star danger. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Now you noted before for Dogway, if they want to get you know get up to level eight and things, they are going to need to be having some way to bring their healing up. So I would have expected to see them you know veer towards the J group so they could play Soraka. Instead, we're pretty heavily into Mirage. So yeah, you don't even actually need to go for Jade that much, you just need to, to slap the Soraka in and have her with some ma um, mana items, just so you can see her be the first uh, Soraka to cast if you get a mirror matchup of the Sorakas. And that's basically it. But also, another advan uh, advantage that uh, Cruel Pack gives you is the is carousel uh, pl placement. Mm. Because uh, while you do get a massive win streak going and extra levels, you're also first on carousel, so you can get all of the items you need. And I think, I think Dogway is leaning into that uh, Quicksilver, which is very, uh, very smart from him. Well, nope, never mind. Nope, apparently I've, not. I've been duped. I've been duped. Uh, yeah, Saucy's on the chat saying the glad that they are not in this lobby. 
Yeah, this is the spiciest lobby probably across the whole of round two. We've, you know, I think Dogware as well, by having the crawl packed in, they've done the classic, you know, acceleration of the lobby. You know, they've stamped their foot on the pedal for what the pace of the lobby has to be. Because if Dogware is level seven and he's throwing out two star dragons at this point, you can't afford to be playing a weak form. No, no, not really. Uh, you would need a, a two-star dragon to f basically deal with that Deja, or maybe you would need an Idus with uh, a Dragon's Claw to basically deal with all of that damage that Deja can put out. And even then, you're maybe not safe because Deja lowers so much of uh, your unit's magic resist. The most I've actually seen Deja go is minus two, 200 magic resist. Oh, yeah. I mean, no, I think you're right. <laughs> The Dragon's Claw is one of the ones few items that gives you enough magic resist to be meaningful against Deja. But we're going to check in on everybody else because it's not just about our packed players. It's also about our Olaf players as well. D-Wolf currently doing pretty decently up on 72 right now. Not getting a big win or loss streak. Has got the slammed in Infinity Edge waiting, hoping a spatula will show up perhaps in the last augment of the game. Uh, what else we got going on? Of course, the Shimmer Scales. So, we noted that people are going to be needing the Dragons coming in to deal with the Deja. Nearly everybody we're seeing so far is at level 6 right now. Well, that's extremely unlikely. Yeah. It's just uh, everyone working on their economy uh, and uh, just trying to, to build up. And also for you know, Kurehua, you have... Uh, uh, you have shimmer, a Shimmer Scale item, so that means... You have to be at uh, 60, 70, uh, 80 gold to have uh, your items be extremely effective, which you see right now, because every third attack of that Volibear deals massive amounts of damage, but it's still not enough for now. Though I will say that having that, having five Volibears already, and we're not even at Wolves, is definitely, uh, is definitely beneficial right now. So when you get to that level 7, when you start rolling around for those Volbears, you're not going to lose too much gold to get to get him to that 3-star. Uh, and also, you have the Dragon Mancer in. Uh, as he levels up, level 7, level 8, maybe you can go for Legend as well and have that Volbear be just a massive undying ta uh, tank. I do worry. I mean, right now we have got a good amount of items coming in be able to reinforce maybe a front line to keep that volley bear from being fully aggroed all the time. Because one th one thing I'm you know thinking about here for the Krehua is that their front line is volley bear and their damage is volley bear as well. And without having a bloodthirster, oh hello. Actually let's throw out every kind of thought there because we've got ourselves the extra item coming in and it couldn't really be too much better. The Mogul's mail and that's a now fully itemized Idus. That's the front line we're missing. Now the Shimmer Scales can really start to party. Yeah, definitely. Five Shimmer Scale, you have the Mogul's Mail, so extra bit of tankiness. You have the Gnar for the extra bit of CC as well. Very nice uh, transitioning. Uh, and the Volibear can now deal massive amounts of damage while not bring up, worrying about being the only front line for, uh, for this board. You can already see an improvement on the win. Oh boy, yeah. So we've got gold dropping from the Mogul's Mail. We've got gold dropping from the Gold Monster's Staff as well. And presumably, yeah, we're going to be seeing the rolls coming in, as you said, for the Volibear to get even stronger. But I suppose this does leave us in the big conundrum that the Shimmer Scale players have. It's that presumably you want to spend money to get Volibears, but you want to save money to keep your Gold Monster's Staff functioning at full capacity. Yeah, you want to you want to be at around that uh, 70 80 gold mark just to have your stuff be as effective as you can but also getting inspire with a vol a volibear. Oh wow, yeah. That is going to be fairly strong and I see an Anivia and I'm thinking that maybe we're, we're getting rolls for that for that orn. Oh boy, yeah, I mean the inspire is just amazing here. It covers I believe the Nearly the entire ball by way of Dragon Monster or Shimmer Scale. In fact, I think it might be the entire board. So, Krehua feeling pretty good about their chances. Of course, they, you know, 
if then they've kind of you know, mentioned they've been pulled in a couple of different directions. Uh, as they go up against Quinnen here, who's actually managed to hit their three star Varus ball, the, the other players who don't have to save their money, they can be pushing levels and getting the extra units on the board that might be too difficult for Quehe to be able to deal with. Yeah. It's always uh, one of the downsides of uh, playing Schumer skill. You have to be very mindful of your uh, economy. And while you do have uh, Windfall as, a, as your first item and you have Celestial Blessing to help out, it is still uh, not something that... It is still a big detriment because you, you're going to be up against boards like this who have a 3-star Varus, a 3-star Alawi. So you have 3-cost uh, carries being a 3 uh, restart themselves and being already strong oh my gosh so d wolf we haven't checked them for a little bit they've decided to abandon the olaf hype train and go for the siphon instead i think that's sort of the traditional approach when you don't find enough olafs to feel comfortable in going for the reroll olaf route but i like what we've got going on there we haven't seen a ton of assassins being played so far but it's certainly devastating if those assassins can land on the right part of the board and Quenin is about to take a siphon directly to the face. Yeah, definitely so. I feel like assassins have been uh, sort of sleeper OP, be but because of the nerfs, people have not been playing them a lot, but they're still one of the fa fairly stronger boards to have, especially against uh, backline heavy comps like the Astrals, like uh, the Corky boards we love to see, so... I would have thought that people would be going much more heavily into assassin boards to deal with those cor uh, keys and those backline carries. And mm. you can already see uh, the Siphon uh, doing well against uh, that Varus 3. Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit worried because, of course, the whole thing with the Assassin Siphon is that a lot of the time he's going to end up charging away from his first target rather than actually killing them means that the positioning can be pretty tricky to work with but it did eventually work out be right this you know, just the fact we've got a siphon and assassin siphon in the lobby really changes up what you can functionally put on a backline yeah definitely so and you're you see uh the pike is going to be an upgrade for the king so that's going to be four whispers which means extra strats for both pike and uh siphon and uh, si assassin siphon has been definitely popping up a little bit more right now and that blue buff is just n nice that's a nice touch yeah pike is such an interesting unit to see in around you know you've got the early parts of the round where pike is kind of building up where generally they aren't getting kills with people are too high health above the execute threshold but later on it just becomes absolutely obscene yeah so when you two-star him, when he gets to build up those stats, he executes at a much higher threshold. And if it, even if it doesn't execute, it still deals so much damage that just with a few auto-attacks later on, you can just kill them. And if uh, D-Wolf can get to, to that late game to have Pike uh, get those massive resets in like uh, he is just doing right now, it is going to be very strong and uh, he can have... A very nice top three uh, finish. So for Putty, uh, we've seen them play before. I think this is one of the situations where we can kind of draw the parallels between regular League of Legends and TFT. Uh, well, I might have to eat my words here. In that the, you know, Pike again the execute usually works very well against shields and Whispers as well. I would have expected to do well, but apparently not the case. Well, no, because. Uh... Guardian Shields proc at like 40% HP and Pike executes at uh, 20. So that's the massive uh, the massive pushback that Guardians can have against Pike. Though uh, still Siphon and Pike are both at, uh, one, at one star. So when you get to those two stars, Pike and Siphon will be dealing a lot more damage. And you can see that board uh, be much more effective. We can see here the power of the backline access. Orietta, who's also running the Shimmer Scales, uh, unfortunately, well, in this case, ends up with no board very quickly indeed. We can see the wind chance there for our friends at Meta TFT, illustrating that pretty nicely. But Dogway, who we've got to check in with again. Uh, wait a second. They. What's going on here? Oh, that's right. No. 
So this is, yes, Dogway, who is our Cruel Pack player, losing against the Shimmer Scale player, who's our other streamer. Oh my gosh, there's so much to keep track yeah. of. Yeah, he, he lost against uh, Kareko, who managed to get that uh, three-star Volibear, if I saw correctly. So now we have... Uh... We have we have uh, Deja, Deja getting countered by that three star Volibear, but it's still not over for Dogway. I think uh, the board is still uh, pretty pretty powerful, and if uh, they can get to to that uh, eight Mirage, it can still be a very a very nice board to have. So Dogway, gonna go for interesting. He's looking to try and reinforce the front line with a Chalice of Power. They are stuck at seven for the time being. So it's, I think they're going to presumably spend all of their HP at once to go up to level eight. Uh, but a three star Nunu coming in, that's absolutely massive. I think that was what Dogway was waiting for to get that three star Nunu because now it has much more HP. So the bite is going to be uh, much bigger and uh, deal a lot more damage. And I, I expect if Dogway wins now, to just level up to level eight and look for the for uh, a, a nice unit to put in to just complete this board. Maybe that Sejuani two on the board for the four cavaliers. So we check in with Quenin again. Remember from before they did manage to hit their astral reroll Varus pretty quickly, but unfortunately the front line is collapsing under the sheer weight of the three star Nunu, and that's a big L for them as Dogway. Looks to stall things out further and establish themselves as the most evil player in the lobby. Yeah, very interesting. And I'm also feeling like I'm seeing uh, Bizzle's board from last game because we're seeing Cavaliers, Mirage with, uh, with the Overcharge. So this is going to be very interesting, but I am a bit afraid for Dogway because now that Siphon is a two-star. So if that Siphon can get onto the Deja, it is going to be Toast. Orietta, who's very worried about being Toast themselves. Quinn and Orietta, both on single-digit HP. They're going to try and make their way through. Unfortunate to come across Dogway at this point because their entire board is being ripped to pieces. The Dragon Monster Anivia is not up to the task. And that will be the first and maybe even our second elimination at the same time. Yes, Quenin is... No, Quenin goes down to minus 9. No, minus 10! Orietta to minus 9. That means we're down to top 6. Yeah, so this is going... This has been quite a bit of... Uh, a bit unlucky, I would say, for uh, for Orietta. Because on all accounts, that Anivia board should be... A top four board because I think it was three star in Nivia maybe, and you had some very solid items on her with jades already and uh, legends, so kind of unlucky that the uh, that most of that last fight was going up against the assassin siphon and uh, Dogway who already had that Nunu three and Deja two. One of the one of the people we haven't seen a whole lot of is Reed TWI who is actually running. A looking like a Swain comp here with a is that Dragon Monster Shabana? I don't think I've ever seen anybody playing that. Yeah, it is. It is a definitely. It's definitely a decent, decent board to have. And uh, oh, what? Wait, what? Dogway just got eliminated. Oh my gosh! Oh, he leveled up and got eliminated. Wow. Hello. So he must have leveled up to the point where he only had one round's HP worth. Damn. Well, yeah, tw 27 sometimes 6. Oh, they were on 14 HP, so they barely lost to that. Oh, that he was up against the mirror matchup of the Mirage. Oh my gosh. These are the times we live in when cruel packs will turn against us. It looks like uh, Dogway is going to do a little bit of scouting for us. Uh, oh, no, maybe not. In which case, we will stick with D Wolf as our remaining streamer player who is still in the game. So let's see. So we've got we've got the Whisper Assassin set up against a decent yeah the Mirage and the Jade and one more. 
so we had another another Deja, so that's another Mirage uh, board. I think Siphon Siphon is definitely going to be fairly strong here, but the thing I am most afraid of is Siphon going up against that Shio Yu because we talked a little bit about this. Uh, Shio Yu, uh, Siphon can uh, struggle versus Shio Yu, but not when you have an assassin Siphon too who just, just demolished that Shio Yu in one bite. Yeah, it worked pretty darn well that time. Unfortunately, you see Nico there, the frustration there must be for Tinker. To have your tank alive at the end of the round really suggests something's gone wrong, but Tarek gets the job done on 32 HP. Oh my gosh, that has got to be a big tilter for D-Wolf. I think uh, D-Wolf is just happy that they're not eliminated right now because even after the one bite on the siphon, it definitely looked like the it definitely um, the Shio Yu definitely looked like they lost almost every unit on the board apart from the siphon, and we do see the six whispers with the assassin uh, siphon struggling a little bit. I think maybe hmm. uh, I think maybe the siphon needs a rage blade to be a bit more effective here. Yes, I think it's going to cast very, very slowly if Siphon isn't taking damage. Fortunately, he takes out the Dage in the backline straight away, which means most of the offensive ability is on hold. But you see Siphon just very casually building up. This is one of the situations where Siphon will be able to get fairly strong. Getting rid of the Yasuo is huge. And then we're down to the one-on-one, -on -one, the Rock and the Hard Face. I think D Wolf is going to be starting uh, having a little bit of nightmares after seeing that Terex. So maybe they'll just start holding Terex if they're they're not three starred on on those boards. Those are some decent items though to get. Hmm. We're in an awkward position with D Wolf here, where I imagine they love to be able to itemize their talent a little bit more thoroughly. But I think maybe anticipating they wouldn't find more than one item for the rest of the game, they haven't left room to do it. Oh, well, they actually still have the magnetic, the, the magnetic remover. So, oh, do they? Uh, the, yeah. Oh, great. Uh, so so that uh, those two items can definitely go on. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, good so spot, you have the, Yeah, you can have that Hurricane and the Giant Slayer on, onto, the, onto the Talon. And Zephyr is an item that I very much like uh, seeing. Oh, okay. Yeah, so... Oh. I going to go for the for the zephyr uh utilization of just removing it once and seeing if they can uh, put it on uh the best unit possible to maybe zephyr a prime target i think you're allowed to say zephyr cheese that's that's an acceptable term in tft it's not an exploit as much as it's an oddity of the way that tft works where we have some real-time elements and some elements which are very much not uh the zephyr will be coming in which will knock the swain up which means it's down exclusively to Shivana to get the work done in the early going. Of course, the Whispers will be building up as time goes by. Unfortunately, Siphon is going to get spent a fair amount of the round just being knocked all around the place. I think this is the end of the line for D-Wolf as, yeah, now Swain has dropped down the Shivana as well. And ultimately, that wasn't even a close round. No, not really, because the Dragomancer Shivana has definitely been the bane of uh, D-Wolf's existence, uh, having lost to it twice. And also, I think Dogway uh, was struggling with that Shivana as well. It's uh, the, the flight from Shivana land, uh, landing and granting uh, granting CC to everyone in like a two-star, uh, two two, uh, in a big, in a big radius, I English is a difficult language. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's a very silly language for very silly people. Uh, we'll, we'll see how it ends up landing here for re TWI. So we've seen them on the other side. So it's, at least on paper, we've got a much more expensive dragon against the cheaper dragon of the Deja, who is very well itemized. The backline Swain is doing work as Shivana. Yeah, I think if Shivana ended up with a little bit more itemization, then maybe... Uh, she could have done a little bit better. Unfortunately, it didn't end up happening. And I think this will be the end of the line for Dragon Matsu Shivana. Yeah, it kind of sucked that that Swain was 
stuck on a sword. If that sword had been a giant slayer or maybe a, a gun blade, he would have had uh, Swain do much more in that uh, team fight. So a little bit, a little bit uh, underwhelming towards those later parts where that Deja with those massive items could just deal uh, quite quite a bit to that board. And also running those five guardians as well with the uh, electric overload has proven to be quite strong uh, for the, for these past two lobbies, I think. Philippe doing some real good work on level seven. I'm really fascinated by what he's putting out here because they've got such a strong board at level seven that's actually doing work against a level 10 board of Tinker. I think it's the innate tankiness of uh, the units that they have because Tarek gives you a lot of armor. Leona has that massive damage reduction of, of her spell. Uh, Guardian shielding being fairly strong. And even though they lost here, if they level up to level 8 and get 6 Guardian in, it is mm. going to be extremely strong. And yo, and we see, those are some nice dragons to choose from. There we go, Mirage coming in, and so Puddy's going to make things just a little bit more electrifying. We've got, let's see, so we've, we have got a Braum who could definitely absorb, yes, and will absorb the Mirage. So that's going to be a really explosive front line. Do you think that's going to swing, you know, with the Guardian 6 coming in and with the X and Mirage spat, do you think that's enough to swing the matchup? So... Yeah, I think eight. Uh, I think it's uh, still five guardian, but if it's six, it could definitely be because six guardians is just a very massive uh, upgrade for this board. But otherwise, if if it's like eight mirage, six guardian, I think it could prove to be uh, helpful quite a bit. But I think they also need that Yasuo to uh, to be two star and to have. Uh, better knockups because one or two unit knockups for Yasuo is not doing too much too much for it right now. That second knockup was great. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, all of the damage I guess for Tinker, with the exception of the Nivea, is going into that frontline area. It's very close, but he was real, real close to winning out that round. Unfortunately, wasn't quite able to drag themselves across the line. We keep an eye out to see if Puddy actually decides to go up a level, but I don't know if they've got the money to do so. No, I don't. I don't think they do. But uh, if they survive for one more round, you have Rift Herald coming up, and if it's not a uh, triple item, it can be some uh, decent money to to have, and they can probably uh, get to that. Uh, get to that level 8, put in uh, Yone, uh, which is the unit they're missing, to have 8, eight Mirage and probably level up, level up that board. Alright, I think if... No, Puddy can afford to... Definitely can afford to soak this loss, given that they've been relatively close losses so far. No routes being found. So I think that should give enough time for Puddy to hit up to level 8 and get in the final Guardian. Well, I suppose... Presumably the final guardian would be uh, the... So we've, we've got one extra Oh, it's guardian. Idis. Yeah, it would be Idis. Idis you, so can't, you, can't... you can't put it in. No, so you wouldn't be able to put it in without losing out Mirage. You would need the Dragon Alliance to be able to put it in. So, yeah, that was a, a miss on my part. So it's definitely going to have to be Yone. Or uh, maybe they were hoping for a guardian guardian emblem from this uh, Rift Herald drop. I love Adoy and Elvin still in the chat. Are they each actually? Other. Yeah, they're, they're still <laughs> trying to taunt each other in the chat. It's brilliant. Uh, let's see. So what have we got coming in here? We've got... T you know, we're so late into this round with our two players, of course, that a lot of their carries are already itemized. So uh, I think we've got... Let's see. We've got Morello's on one side, which we already had, which is very unfortunate. Yeah, there for Puddy, who does hit level 8 eventually. On the other side of things... We now have an Archangels onto our friend Soraka. I think Puddy is, I think, fairly justified in saying this one might well be done. So I think they were looking for that Yone, but 
well, they sell for whatever they could find, which is the Twitch. Having a Soraka 2 with those items is just incredibly, incredibly strong. Th this needs to be a, like a Hail Mary Yasuo 10, 10 unit knockup or something. That, that's was fairly kind of close. I guess yeah, so if Anivia gets actually killed, then maybe, but I think, yeah, Soraka, we kind of end up with a three-pronged situation here. Soraka has to die first, because if she doesn't die, then no one else can die. Then Anivia needs to die as well, and I think that's too much for Putty to ask for. So congratulations. Uh, oh, Blue QT, that last game was rigged. What happened? Tell us all about it. Because we are getting ready for game number three coming up. In fact, I think we've got all of our results in already from that previous game. Which is particularly amusing because Putty must have put themselves in as second before it actually happened. Yeah, this this is going to be interesting. I think at the end the Twitch probably needed to be something else. I, would have, I wouldn't have minded Putty going for uh, a second Whisper with the Thresh. To actually have those resistances lowered on the Shiyou, on someone else, maybe a Silas uh, or an Elise. I think Silas would have probably been best because of the AoE uh, spell that they have. So maybe that could have helped out their board, but I think Tinka was just too strong with the the Soraka 2, the Shiyou 2, uh, the 9 Jade uh, comp level 10. Alright guys, so we are coming up on our final round of play, which means that I'm going to be sending out a feedback form with the next round uh, assignments. So if you are at all interested, you, that's one of the ways you can win our RP from ricks.gg. So I'll just bring our faces back for a second as we explain stuff. In fact, no, let's, let's hop across the price screen, that makes a bit more sense. So we'll be sending out the feedback form with the final round pairings, which are actually live right now. Let's go notify everybody that that is the case. Uh, feedback form for RP. Last round pairings. Uh, please start at, well, let's say, let's give them five minutes or so. 18 past, which is a little bit of an awkward time. Uh, but hopefully it will not be too confusing. Yeah, hopefully. Oh, uh, Quen... Right, so... Well, say so that, uh, Quen is going to be dropping out, so... Uh, let's actually take back the pairings, because we need to actually drop Quen from... Uh, from the competition. So they are gone for round three and four. Now let's create the lobbies again, and hopefully Quen will be... Nope, still showing up in the lobby. Oh, well. Uh, wait, that's because I put the wrong person. All right. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll take ourselves a short break while I try not to confuse myself by talking and doing admin stuff at the same time. And we'll be back for our final round of play just after this break.
people in the crowd but i only see your face in all the lights and as the bass keep pounding on me baby i really want to make you mine i don't really care about love i don't really care about happy ever afters something about you gives me hope something about you yeah Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Counters Casual Competition. It's almost time for our final round of play. And Deadly Ghost, we've already seen that Yucca, who is one of our players in pole position, is pre-crowning themselves as tournament champion. What's that about? Uh, well, we've seen some discussion in the chat about Yucca paying off more ducks, so... It depends on how much they paid off more duck to get the, uh, the luck with, with the augments and the units. But I think it's fair to say that Yurka is familiar with, uh, with the tournament. He is a, a regular here and he's always placed uh, at the top or near the top. So it's not, it's not unusual to say that he is one of our front favorites for, uh, for the tournament. And old Fatality, thank you very much for the subscription and for Times and New Ramen for the follow as well. We are just about to get things started. So we've only got Yoko's point of view for Lobby 1. So we'll be switching between Lobby 1 and Lobby 2 just to kind of give us a little bit of variety. I think, let's see. So Lobby 2 is starting right now. So we'll hop in with them. This let, Do let me know in the chat, guys. This might end up being too confusing to actually switch between lobbies. In which case, we you know, lobby one is ultimately the the one that's the most influential on the outcome of tournament, so we will just stick with that. It's normally we'd end up with two or three POVs in lobby one. Hasn't worked out that way this time round. One day, Deadly Ghost, one day we'll have a spectator mode and all these warriors will be behind us. Uh, hopefully soon. Uh, I'm not asking for much more, Doug. I just want I just want uh uh, to spectate when my friends in and to spectate tur tournaments that that's i think that's not much to ask all right well let's get into lobby two uh let's see we can also we've also got our views into lobby one which is going on right now so again we'll be hopping back and forth between the two that's let's get things started so in Lobby 2, these players can potentially climb their way up to contest for first place. Let's see, so our highest ranked player in Lobby 2... And uh, let's see... Oh my gosh. Would be Eat My Post, who is on 11 points. Yeah, there's a bunch of players on 10 or 11 points. So yeah. I don't think Blue any is of also them... there. Yes. So if... If Yurka gets griefed out of Lobby 1, which is quite likely, given how they've acted so far, then one of our lower players, even a player in Lobby 2, could potentially win the competition. Yeah, it is going to be interesting. Uh, Elvin with uh, two second places. Uh, uh, you have Buggo and uh, Zystorm, I think. Uh, that That's how uh, you pronounce it. They're at 14, Yurka being at 16. So if Yurka goes for the fifth and one of those two can get the first or second in uh, lobby one, we can still see a winner not named Yurka. All right, so we've got a little overview of lobby two right now, but let's check in with Yurka briefly. They've done the same thing as they did before, which is to have a frozen frame of a TV show in the top left-hand corner. It does look like Yurka's stream quality is suffering a little bit, so... I guess that's another reason. Oh, there we go. It's uh, it's recovered itself. 
I think I think that is strategic placement from Yurko hiding uh, the strats. Ah, uh, that's that's where you keep the strats in the top left hand corner. So, all right, well, we'll come back. Hopefully, Yurko will have. Uh... Are they, are they? Okay, I think they're sorting their stream out right now. So we'll come back to them. We, I think we've got our first augments just coming in for our players. It will be a gold augment lobby, and we're seeing Dermadiddy, who is also known as a doy, who we've seen screwing around in the chat, having a fight uh, for quite some time uh, with Elvin. They're going to go for the trade sector. How do you feel about reroll at the moment, Deadly? Uh, I think there are some units you could utilize uh, early on with, uh, with trade sector. I think some of those early Dragon Mancer comps, uh, maybe a Karma or a Set can be fairly decent. And uh, like we talked about, Astral uh, Reroll can also be a decent uh, comp to play early on. But we see Adoi going for those Jades and the Guardians, which is not, which is not uh, a comp that is unheard of. It is. It was fairly common when Karma and Ezreal were some of the strongest uh, one cost units. So. It's still a pretty, pretty strong uh, comp, while Karma and uh, Ezreal got some uh, nerfs uh, added to them in the recent patches. It's still a decent comp to start off early on. The healing from Jade is still uh, fairly decent, and having Guardians early on, especially with Leona too, is a fairly good board, I'd say. It does seem like that's the area we are headed towards. We can see the Hopper over on the Karma. Of course, we have, we, you know, we do see a lot of karma being put in initially as an item holder and then being swapped out for elsewhere. With those nerfs you mentioned, you know, what kind of break point would you think for Adoy would be here to, you know, to make the decision between am I actually running this comp or am I just using it as a placeholder? I think uh, if uh, you get some uh, karma some karmas in your role, or maybe you can just decide to swap it out for uh, an Anivia. Because uh, Karma and Anivia can hold the same items. I think the only difference is Karma prefers blue buff to Anivia preferring uh, a Spear of Shoujin. But otherwise, things like Morellonomicon, J uh, JG, uh, maybe even some uh, uh, healing items like Gunblade can work fairly well on both units. So we can still see Karma being uh, an item holder for Ado here. I was seeing Time Stay Ramen, who absolutely I didn't realize quite how good of a name that was. Uh, in the chat, suggesting to take the Elise, and actually Adoy will end up doing that. Uh, I think Adoy is actually taking their play advice from Timesy Ramen in the chat, which is amazing. Uh, we've got another shapeshifter coming in, so uh, Timesy Ramen, you need to get, get your strategic advice in, because apparently you are driving the good ship Adoy from this point forwards. I think this is going to be fairly interesting, because... Uh... Now, because you can have triple dragon mounts or double shapeshifter going uh, going on if uh, Adoy chooses to to do so, but I think uh, because Leona is two star and uh, he got those Leonas early on, that the the, the triple J the board is now a a bit better to uh, to have. Also, that Karma cast uh, going into the Nether was a bit unlucky. Someone we are seeing for the first time this tournament is Kinky Ju Uwu, who of course is our returning tournament's champion from last time round. Just about woke up in time for the competition, but not wake up early enough to keep their win streak going as a doy. Guided by Twitch chat as all good things are, takes the early win and keeps their win streak going, the only player to do so. Yeah, Kinky with... Uh... An unlucky sixth in the round two is missing out on the final in the final lobby, sitting at ten points now. But Adoi is going for the classic uh, win streak early on, and uh, I think that was two people he actually denied out of having one hundred health. Uh, so Adoi being uh, the bully uh, of, the, of the lobby early on. So bully in Twitch chat, bully <laughs> in the lobby. Is, is that where you're going with this? Yes. Love it. All right, let's 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 check in on Lobby 1 and see if Yurka's managed to patch up what they've been doing. Yes, they have. So it looks like it's all nice and working now. So Yurka up here. 
the big thing, you know, I think we can we can take a very short amount of time with Yucca, like over the course of this round, because all that really matters in the immediate is will Yucca win this lobby? And right now, they're looking pretty decently solid. Uh, Volley Bear making a return from the previous lobby, which it proved to be surprisingly popular. He doesn't even need to win the lobby. He just needs to get to top two to secure the uh, the win of the tournament. But also, that's a Volibear, oh, a Swain, and now uh, and now a Lee Sin. Oh, wow. This is going to be a very interesting board. Huh. Yeah, Dragon Monster's coming out in force here. We're even seeing more game picked up in the shop. The six Dragon Monster angle seems very much possible here. Just going to make the board as strong as they can. So, all right. Yucca, as you said, on 17 points, so three points clear of Elven and Buggo, and in fact, yes, Buggo and let's see, XY Storm she said all 14 points come in. Yucca on 17, they throw down the gauntlet to the entire lobby, saying that they are going to go completely undefeated through this entire competition. There's very few people who've been able to do that. One of them, of course, is Improbable Blob. Ah. Uh -huh. A very interesting. I think though that Yerka has a de has a decent board lined up, and with those three cause Dragon Mancer units, I think if uh, they can get to that level six uh, early on, uh, what are they missing? They're missing the Ash. Uh, oh, they sold the Leeson for economy. So uh, if they can get that uh, early Le uh, that Leeson again, and if they if Yerka levels up to six again, that's going to be a six Dragon Mancer Volibear, and the Volibear already has uh, uh, the Hand of Justice. So very interesting to see. All right, so we're gonna switch across back to lobby two. Hooray! Just to confuse you guys further, really stretch. Uh, how much? So, well, this is one of the things I was considering for you know for the the regional level competitions is is TFT a game which you could potentially follow at a higher level in terms of like not looking at what the players are necessarily doing specifically, but just looking at pure results where you would look at several different lobbies, like there may be two or three different lobbies during the course of a round, where you'd only be caring about where people were finishing and not necessarily what they were playing. Uh, well, me being uh, extremely against results-based ba results analysis in any game <laughs> is uh, ki kind of uh, going up against uh, what you're suggesting, so I don't think I would be able to follow... I think TF you can still follow TFT uh, simply based on results. Uh, you can be a results-based analyst. I don't want to mention uh, names of uh, people who, who do that for League. But yes, you can still uh, do that. Uh, you can still check out what augments they have with uh, some, of the, uh, some of the websites uh, being evolved right now. You can see... Uh, the augments, the items that they have, so you can see what which part uh, a player was struggling with, whether it was itemization, uh, getting a, a two-star on a unit, uh, maybe bad augment choice, or uh, bad rolls of augments, so I think it is possible. Alright, well, we'll check in with Fatality Gaming. So, Fatality and Adoy, I realize now as subscribers, I'm now materially obligated to be nice to them. So, I have to do my best to pretend to be nice. Fatality. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll try and put this in the nicest way possible. Uh, Fatality has kept their options open of their itemization very, very widely. Yeah, so Fatality is not climbing items. I think they were waiting on the second uh, augment, which... Um... Oh, that's interesting. That's a double cavalier augment, so... I think they're just waiting for. Uh... So you can either get Cavalier Emblem or Earth. Uh, Earth Grab Bag was also basically the same thing. Now you mm. just get a Sejuani Sidu because, uh, well, now we have uh, Triple Cavalier coming in with that Cavalier Emblem. So this is going to be fairly interesting. I'm very excited to see uh, where Fatality goes. Uh... From here, because you can go for the scales corns, uh, you can go for maybe uh, Cavalier's Pat uh, Olaf if you get if you can get it early on. 
Yeah, I mean, this is... I, I love Devastating Charge in particular because of how much it changes the gameplay of Cavaliers. You can see here that, you know, the Cavaliers come and charge in. They do around 75 to 100 damage off a of base. But knowing how the round is going to play out makes such a big difference here for Fatality. If they can get a kill on an individual unit and allow for their Cavaliers to actually start charging, their damage goes up you know, significantly. But if they get mired down in a team like D-Wolf has got here, then they do almost no damage. Yeah, I think that's... Uh, that's uh, one of the drawbacks of uh, Cavaliers, where you need that Lilia to be fairly strong so your Cavaliers can jump to a different unit, maybe have uh, a Sunfire Cape uh, or a Bramble Vest on uh, one of your Cavalier units so that you can have... Uh, you can have them... Uh, charge uh, charge more, get those extra resistances, get that devastating charge off. Uh, it's not as good if you only have uh, your backline being uh, your backline axis of Diana being strong in killing units and your Cavaliers just being stuck on one unit the whole round. I wouldn't mind seeing Fatality going for a Giant Slayer on this Lilia. At least this time around we've got all the Cavaliers on one side, so they're all applying their devastating charge to the same unit. So you see Tarek, well, the two of them did. So Tarek goes down to half health immediately. With the scale scorn being active, I could see Lydia, you know, with a giant slayer actually getting some kills and starting to set the cavalier train off and rolling in a serious way. Yeah, definitely. And we we got to see some Lilia buffs and three-star Lilia being a carry unit has now become uh, a decent board to have for uh, scale scorn, so if you can't get that all off or that Di Diana going in, Lilia with uh, some tanky items in the forms of a bloodthirster or a, uh, gargoyles can be fairly strong for a carry. So we already see it. we uh, have a Lilia with uh, you have a Lilia you could go for, but we see the set the fourth cavalier setting in in the form of the Hecarim. So we can see what Fatality is going for. I think Devastating Charge and the Cavalier Emblem kind of force you to go into those Cavaliers. So mm. it's going to be interesting. Of course, the big Cavalier we're missing here, apart from the Hecarim who has just been picked up, is going to be the Nunu. I mean, if you're talking about units that are able to get kills and then start charging to other units, Nunu is amazing for doing that. Yeah, especially... Uh, sorry about that. Especially... Uh, since uh, Nunu benefits a lot from the Sejuani buff for the guild, uh, where you, the more HP you have, you can get that true damage uh, bite. So this Nunu is uh, kind of the big component that is supposed to bring the whole board together. And this is a big question here for Vitality, is do they re-roll this point to try and find more Lydia's, or do they keep the gold in pocket? Especially knowing that Wheel Dio is also trying to pick up news for themselves. I think the big advantage that uh, Fatality has is that uh, their board is level 6, while Wielder is level 5. So, if... We, uh, I just want to ahead. point out there, what we saw in that last round is what we could potentially be seeing if these, you know, if these Cavaliers really come together. The... Yeah. the the speed at which they took the board down was ridiculous. Yeah, that, that was just devastating charge after devastating charge. And you saw the Diana uh, going into the back line, the, the Giant Slayer Lilia going into the front line, and you have still a fair bit of AoE with all of those Cavalier units. So, yes, very strong board. I want to see more of that. All right, so we've got the Cavaliers being level up fatality. We'll keep an eye out for them, but we've still got so much more to keep track of. We've got Guardians over here for Friend Adoy, who has got... <laughs> I don't know what's going on there, but we've got a Thresh with an Infinity Edge and a Quicksilver. Not doing an absolute ton of damage, but all right. Uh, no, Adoy doesn't know either, so I guess at least we're all on the same page. I think uh, Thresh is just meant to be the item holder and uh, being that fourth guardian, those items are basically not good on any other unit on this board. So I think it's just, I have Thresh, I can put the items on, I'm going to replace them later with maybe a Yasuo. All right. Well, Adoy, apparently 
maybe Thresh, AD Thresh is it. They get the win there against Wildeo. So nicely done for them. On 80 HP right now with the incredibly tanky composition with the four Guardian and three Jade. Almost no damage in the comp at all apart from a two star Anivia, but hey, apparently it's working and maybe they'll pick up some items to reinforce that. D-Wolf is our last player to check out though. Let's see what they've got for us. Oh, quite an interesting board we, we see here. It's a Nomsy board. <laughs> it is a Nomsy board. <laughs> now, if I tested this uh, yesterday, I'm pretty sure putting in more than one instance of a given trainer does not award you with more biscuits. No, I don't. I don't think uh, that is that is the case. Oh, actually, it is. Wait, did it work? Yes. Oh my gosh. So apparently, we, I'm we super just, wrong. Well, D Wolf is uh, definitely utilizing trainer to to its to its fullest, and also we see a Sona now with that with that Lulu. That is going to be a massive upgrade uh, for this board and. A Jinx 2, a Tristana 2 coming in. This this board is we're currently seeing seeing it get level up. D Wolf's gonna lean on Jinx for the time being to be the item holder for the competition. Maybe. I mean we're not into the area where we're gonna be seeing a Jinx 3 anytime soon, so I imagine we'll be looking for D Wolf to pick up that corky relatively soon. Die Zombie Fool, what a great name. Getting beaten up by our well-fed Nomsy friend. Yeah, I very much love the static shiv on the Jinx, uh, mm. and also the Rage Blade be uh, being there, providing the extra bit of attack speed because uh, the static shiv just gives you an earlier cast on your uh, Jinx rockets, which trigger an extra stun. So nice bit of CC, uh, good uh, good attack speed. It's and it's also a great item holder for the Corky. Salvage bin being hollow, but it's ultimately going to end up being a jeweled lotus. Looking, I think, towards some of the later game casts here for D Wolf. So they're doing pretty well. Our Fatality will be checking with a little bit more frequently because they are suffering a little bit. As actually, they're going to pick up the Guardian Emblem. Oh my gosh. Fatality. They are off the map when it comes to traditional comps. I don't even know what they're going to be doing with that one. Is this a, a four, four skills corn uh, for Cavalier Bard in the making? I think it is. Going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm really surprised we didn't see the the Nunu angle coming in here with, you know, when we've got the War Mox. You mentioned, of course, Nunu benefiting yeah. hugely from the extra health, but it is going to be on Lilia to do most of the work here. And unfortunately, the comp of their fatality is again getting mired down in the front line. They're not doing the immediate damage they need to be able to access, you know, the charge and charge and charge again they need to be able to win. I think fatality was stuck rolling for the for the Lilia, but uh think they maybe got sidetracked into other units as well. And now we see the level up and uh well I think Diana and uh, there we go. There we go. All right. They were waiting that, for that. Yeah, so this should make an enormous difference to the composition. So we've got, yes, we've got Nunu, who's also going to be keeping themselves up at, topped up at nicely at full health with the shield. Two star hacker coming in. If they think if they can hit the two star Nunu, they're in real good spot, and they can. They've got one more space to put in, and they seem to have forgotten about that. So uh, we'll see how they do up against Blue. Yeah, I would actually just put in the, the second uh, Diana there. Just have that extra bit of uh, backline access. Well, it's working right now. Blue is on. We saw this before, actually. You mentioned the the big counter to danger is just units tanking up to shrug off the magic resist shred. In this case, the Cavaliers, they've got a ridiculous level of resistances to be able to do just that. Yeah, and with that devastating charge, like the extra bit of damage, five Cavalier is hundred and twenty-five. Uh, armor and magic resist and it's actually doubled after with each charge so Deja has to go through a ridiculous amount of magic resist of attacks just to be able to deal damage to those cavalier units and that is one of the the uh, best counters to Deja it's uh, five cavaliers 
All right, so working out pretty well. Let's go check in with Lobby 1 and Yaka to see what they are up to. Oh my gosh, they're at the top of the lobby. I think Yaka may have done the seemingly impossible, if not deeply improbable. They seem to be on course to not only go for a tournament undefeated, but actively tell the rest of their lobby that they were going to do that. Uh, well... Oh, maybe not. <laughs> these, that karma needed to cast. I think you, I think you pulled the classic ca caster curse onto Yurka. I think, uh, well, Yurka just needs to get that Soraka and for the nine Jaden and have Soraka healing the whole board, and that's going to be just the completion for Yurka and what's going to get get him over that threshold to be top two because you already see it's already it's just him and Elvin. Having a lot of HP, you already see average try hard and bug all down to below 60 HP. Alright, we saw Elvin talking about Yurka Mort Dog in the lobby. We get to see the evidence for ourselves. I think Yurka actually ended up yeah, ending up with a pretty good item when it was all said and done. Actually a relevant one. Uh to put the Ooh. Titans in place for Siphon. I don't think our lobby I don't think our lobby is griefing uh Yurka as much as they should be. At least based on the board that Yucca is playing. That, that was just a level up, and uh, he already had the Ash 2 lined up, so... Uh, he has double Mystic, double Evoker, he already has the Shapeshifters with the Nico and the Nar, and the Shio 2 stars. And we already see, you have people uh, contesting him and mirroring his board as well, but he's still pulling out those massive wins. I think that's one of the things, isn't it? You know, the TFT is sort of somewhat, you know, it feels like it should be a central part of a lot of TFT that, you know, a comp shouldn't be able to fully function at two star. But for Yurka, as we see here for the Jades, yeah, being contested doesn't really seem like it slowed him down nearly at all. And Tinker taking the big L there means that they are pushed further down the table. Apparently, it was a 3 1 Shiyou for Yurka, Elvin's telling us. As there is exactly what you called for before. Soraka comes in as well. 4%. Eh, it's nothing. Uh, I will say, one of the older games I've put on Cruel Pack was me getting 2 1 level 7 and a 2 2 bard. So, 4%, 4%, 4 Soraka is actually good when you have a, a 9 Jade board. I think it's still a pretty decent chance to get. Alright, we'll, we'll see. Yako's going to be up against another Cavalier player. Uh, Puni is actually going to go for Twitch Carry. That is not something we see very often at all, but we do know that statistically it is a pretty solid comp. Pretty solid though, I don't think it's going to cut it. Yako is on an absolute rampage for the lobby. And Puda is merely their latest victim. I think that's a mix of a guild of a guild and the cavalier comp, but it's just you you're put you're put up against such a strong of a board so early on. We're just now getting to Dragon Treasure. And imagine if if we're just getting to Dragon Treasure and Yurka is, has this strong of a board, imagine just in a few rounds, what it, what it could be. You could have a Soraka 2, a Lulu 2, an Anivia 2 going on. Nico could also get upgraded as well because Yurka already uh, has uh, has a lot of... Uh, has gone up to level 8, and those are some great Nico items coming in. we got a Giant Slayer still unattended to left in still in play. Of course, Yurka could go up to level 9 and start looking towards bringing Yasuo into the composition or maybe another Mystic if they feel so inclined. We'll switch away though from Yurka dominating Lobby 1 and check in. No! Fatality Gaming! At least we got to see them die. They are my hero for attempting to make a Cavalier devastating charge comp work. Unfortunately, it was not to be. No, it was uh i think it, the detrimental thing was they didn't have nunu early on to the, onto the game and so mm. they only got it while level up but uh seven and they were already at 30 40 uh hp so not much you can do by that by that point and also not having uh, a lot of your units two start and three start was definitely 
kind of uh, a, a feels bad moment. The Wolf, they're feeling pretty good right now. In second place in the lobby, up against Wheel, though, who is a level behind. Of course, one of the, one of the things from seeing most interesting recently is that we've got, you know, we have got a decent variety of frontline choice at the moment. You know, we've got the Siphon-based ones, which let you play Zoe, or we've got any number of different dragons that will allow you to just park a huge amount of HP in the front of your comp. Yeah, I think the, the I'm sorry, I just laughed incredibly because that was a triple spear of Shojin Asol. But oh going boy. back to yeah, going back to your point, I think dragons have been uh, very instrumental to a lot of pe a lot of people's success. Uh, not for D Wolf right here, but yeah, dr uh, dragons uh, and uh, what you said before about uh, two star boards not working as well as they should i think dragons because they are double cost they work for uh by being two mm. stars because the stats they have are just so 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 large that if you have great economy to get a two star board in it is a two star dragon and it's still so strong and so powerful to have a doy getting taken out very low as will dio will join fatality on the bench getting knocked out relatively early fatality apparently just needed one more Nunu or one more Diana to be able to get up to oh. three stars. So that has got to really sting. Yeah, it goes back, goes back to just getting more dogged. <laughs> I, if if Yurka has been getting more dogs blessing, then Fatality Gaming has gotten more dogs curse for this game. I did feel bad for Fatality because yes, it was obvious they weren't going to find Lilia too. Oh, sorry, Lilia 3. And then people, other people were playing Nunu meant they weren't going to find Nunu. I think maybe have just not been the right lobby for it. And I guess a good illustration of how some augments, as tempting and as fun as they should be as Devastating Charge, are maybe a lot better to pick up once you've got a more of a read on the lobby. You know, maybe as a second or even... I wouldn't maybe even... I'd say probably a second augment only. Yeah, I think uh, when you... When you get uh, forced into into that lobby, it's also into that team comp. It's also a bit, uh, a, a bit feels bad, man. Uh, as well, sorry for all my Twitch terminology, but yeah, it it is fairly difficult to be forced into playing Cavaliers when you get double Cavalier augments, and then on top of that, not hitting your most prolific units into it is just, uh, well. It's, it's very sad. A kinky we see there with the triple Shoujin Aurelian solo uh, pointing yeah. out from before. Uh, it's running to a little bit of an issue there that the we've, with the most recent nerf Aurelian Sol getting a lot less damage after the 15 second ascension. So I think actually building a damage item might be necessary now as strange as that sounds. Yeah, and I also think that uh, kinky is struggling from... Uh... The same thing that uh, Fatality was struggling because they have not hit uh, Aurelian Soul 2, which is, I think, a, a better unit now because Aurelian Soul 1 got uh, hit pretty pretty hard with those nerfs. So you actually need the, the two-star Aurelian Soul to have him be that, that strong unit that he was at the beginning of this patch. Blue does have themselves a pretty strong setup here. With a Deja, I think that's a Deja too. It's a little bit tougher. Yes, to, it is. To tell with them. So that's the big win for Blue. Keeps them from being knocked out and uh, keeps them actually on a win streak as Die Zombie Fool, who I believe is on random. I certainly would have remembered a name that amazing had it come through the sign up sheet. Goes out in fifth. We're down to our top four. So this is a good time to revisit what we were talking about before. With We've got certain players who've got the potential to jump up. From ninth, uh, the big ones here are Will Dio, who is dead, uh, but Tinker, uh, who is wait, is Tinker in this lobby? No, no, they're in uh, lobby one, I think. Oh, are they? Oh, how weird. Yes, they were the the person who is mirroring uh, Yurka's comp. Oh, right. Sorry, the reason I got thrown off there is because some of our results have actually come in from table one already which have actually thrown off what I was expecting. So 
So, okay, so coming into this one, let's see. So our players who don't have results in. Let's see. So we've got D-Wolf, who came into this one with... Uh, in 20th, actually, with nine points. Not going really to be winning that anytime soon, I'm afraid. Uh, Eat My Post came in 15th with 11 points. Uh, Blue... Also blue. Blue came in with 11 points as well. And Kinky was uh, on 18th. So we've got some potential here if we see a first coming through. But as we go back to Lobby 1, Yerka, as you said, doesn't even need to finish in first place to win the tournament in pretty convincing fashion. Seems to be on path to be finishing at least in the top two. Yeah, so that's all Yerka needs, a top two. And uh, being the bully of the of the lobby has been uh, extremely fortunate for him because three people are on one life. Uh, so if Average Tryhard, who is on a big winning streak right now, can eliminate everyone else for Yerka, they would be doing his job for him. Oh, so Die Zombie... I do apologize, Die Zombie Fool. Absolutely you are, Palatorn. I guess it's just my tired brain not noticing... Well, Die Zombie Fool, I will absolutely remember your name from here on out. In fact, yeah, Die Zombie Fool did pretty decently. They've just, they've ended out their last game, so they've ended out on 15 points. So, that won't put them in a position to challenge for first, but we are getting more and more results in across the board. I think this may, in fact, uh, be pretty close to the end of this lobby, or these lobbies we're watching, the actual end of the tournament itself. So let's jump back to table two. So Fatality has dropped out. Of course, they are finished with their games for today, which leaves us with just two. Dermody, who is currently spectating uh, D-Wolf, and Eat My Post. Those are the two remaining players battling here in Lobby 2. Yeah, so D-Wolf has a really nice board uh, set up for themselves uh, that Namsi has been chomping away because D-Wolf started out even at uh at level two, when he was at level two he already had trainer in so that Namzi has been uh, fed really well those cookies have been uh, paying out fairly nicely for them because they have had some uh, some great success but the astral that astral board is just very very strong a kiana a talonin and also a twitch helping out eat my post to a to a victory Congratulations! So that means that lobby is done as well. Gosh, I'm trying to figure out if we've got any other lobbies active. Do let us know in the chat. Uh, if the if there's anyone going uh, still going on right now. Let's see. <laughs> Fatality would like us to correct the results of table two. Apparently. There's an underdog player called Fatality Gaming who beat everyone with the amazing, uh, overpowered, arguably, Cavalier Comp. I see. So that must have been a glitch in the Matrix we just saw. It, I almost certainly. All right, let's come back to our beautiful faces and see. So let's... We've got results still waiting, I think, from maybe one table. That's the table yeah. that... What I about think, Yerka? Uh, is the lobby still oh, so going Oh, it's still going. Oh, yeah, you're right. Absolutely. Let's go back to there. Sorry, I've gone confused. Confused myself doing there. All right. So glitches in the Matrix aside. Let's see if Yerka can uh, go completely undefeated in the competition. Now, they're at the point... W let's see. Against average Tryhard. Let's, let's check the current scores. So Tryhard is on 13 points. Yerka coming in... With 16, double first 16 places. points. And Knight 1 is on 12. So, I don't think either of these players can actually beat Yerka, but they can keep Yerka from getting too big for their boots by actually handing them a non-first place finish. Yeah, I think Average Tryhard uh, is probably the one person who can uh, deal massive amounts of damage to Yerka's HP, like we see. Woo! Night Tone has been eliminated, so I think that automatically secured the, the win for Yerka. But now, all that remains to see is whether he will be a triple first or 
Will it be a non uh, golden tournament? Maybe is that the is that the proper uh, terminology <laughs> I think that's a for way it? it? Uh, oh, I see someone on the results page has already put Yucca to second. <laughs> <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Amazing. This is what we get for crowdsourcing our results. No, someone put him at eighth, actually. Oh, <laughs> at, at the beginning, someone put him at eight just because they they wanted to go out of spite. <laughs> Amazing stuff. All right, so we've got Ooh. the last second reroll, which worked out pretty damn well. Let's see if Yoka can pull it off. They've got themselves at least the Yasuo one to work with. Uh, Jojo are going to admit their culpability in the sabotaging of the tournament results as average tryhard trying to force Yoka into second. I think they've just about done it. Yoyu is still up and fighting, but unfortunately their DPS is not enough to get through Eilis in a timely fashion. <laughs> and Yoka's dream of going unbeaten the whole competition through will be stopped at the final hurdle. Hey, Yurka still pulls off the, the win, so still a big congratulations to him. He obviously confirmed that he paid off more dog by going first, first, second. <laughs> Just, uh, congratulations to, to you, Yurka. Uh, I think it was still a very nice couple of games from him. Even we saw in the second lobby, he was already going for an early win streak uh, when we had his uh his point of view so very nice a very nice gameplay from Yurka. uh we we always know that he is a strong player being near or at the top of almost every lobby so yay <laughs> absolutely very well done there uh let's sorry the reason i'm starting a little distracted is because we've still got table four running and i think we might actually have a way to get a look in on what's going on over there uh, so Bizzo and Krehua are both playing on that table, and hey. they are both still live if the results... Yes, in fact, we can confirm. We go now live to table four. All right, so Bizzo, I think, yeah, he just got eliminated into third, and Krehua is still, is still in it. Still in it. Whoa! Uh... It's the Dragon Horde! I can remember this one because they've got slightly different symbols for each other. The Dragon Horde's the one that gives you a bit of damage rather than defenses. So, Pile of Dragons, I mean, is that not just the biggest exemplifier of the set at the moment? Yeah, uh, G, uh, G4 with the, with the Dragon Horde, but also he is up against the Deja 3-star, which is... <laughs> Holy moly! Talk about a high roll! Good lord! Krehua, looking pretty, please. Uh, no, so that's Bizzo, of course, down in the corner, not Krehua. Let's, uh, let's actually switch yeah. across to uh, Krey's POV so you can see. You can see the face of concentration there. Even with a three-star four-cost dragon, or I guess eight-cost dragon, they're still sweating the positioning, and they do hit it correctly. They are, I think, likely going to hit through and be able to do something about the Raelian Soul yeah, before it gets I fully think... going. Yeah, I think the the positioning was there not to get hooked by the Shivana and just be away from Asol when oh, that true. first when that first bit of uh, Ace when I mean, that first cast of Asol goes in. So Krehua with great positioning, Yone got hooked in, which is something you want because you want Yone uh, on the front line. And congratulations to Krehua for winning this lobby. That Deja three, wow. Yes, <laughs> that smile at the end was absolutely wonderful. It's nice to see that we're giving people opportunities to expand their joy here today. So I believe that's going to be our last results coming in. Yes. So we've had just one drop in the entire moment, which is pretty good, honestly. Because uh, real life will intervene so very often. Which means that we will have our final results coming in. So let me just get everything in place for our last giveaway. So we've had, we've had 14 responses on our feedback forms uh, but we can do our official unveiling of the results on stream i guess it's it's kind of feels it's very redundant now that we've actually got deliberately a 
you know, we've absolutely got ourselves a, you know, an open showing of the results, but let's hide them now, haha, <laughs> just to be a jerk. Ah, so, we've ended up, well, we do know first, but we still need to announce second, third, and uh, later on, so it's still a pretty nice, uh, a pretty intense situation. We do all right. have the results, but still. All right, let's uh, let's go and let's go and announce them on stream. So, uh, let's see. So, Tony participant, uh, let's get everyone onto stream uh, for the final ones of the day. Twitch.tv counterfeit cast for the giveaways and final results reveal. Oh my gosh! Amazing stuff. All right, so let's bring it alive onto stream. Actually, yeah, we'll, we'll keep people we'll keep people tense for a little bit. We're gonna do some more giveaways to start off with, just to <laughs> the tension of not knowing where you finish in the competition, which is always a good experience to have. So first of all, we're gonna need. Uh, let's see. Let's grab all the players who were live for round two, because so we did have one person leave, but they left at the end of round two. So this nice. will be. Our first giveaway. <laughs> Fatality has got a very long uh, explanation about devastating charge, but I guess we'll get we'll get back to that later. I don't know if Fatality is on the Discord. <laughs> we can maybe have an interview with them afterwards. Uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Oh, well, that's too bad. Uh, all right, so this will be our first giveaway of the day from Rick's GG. Just a quick reminder of what our prizes are. So we've got a random player winning RP, a random streamer winning RP. A random survey responder winning RP. And then we'll go on to the little legend egg picks as well. So. This is from all the players today. So just again a reminder of who Ricks are. Who are our sponsors. Uh, they're an amazing organization to support women and non-binary. You know uh, just uh, marginalized genders rather to cover uh, more of that there. In the esports space. Please do give them a follow. To show us our appreciation. We wouldn't have the RP to give away if they weren't supporting us. Uh, Fatality, all right. If you come on to if you come onto Discord, we'll come and join you once we've done the giveaways, and you can tell us all about the Cavalier stuff. So, Deadly Ghost, would you mind counting us in for our first Rick's giveaway for RP for every single competition participant? Yeah, I've done this one a few times already, and it is my favorite one to do. So, three, two. Let's get ready to rumble! Oh. Alright, well, we're gonna get sued by that guy. He's really litigious. Uh, let's remove all the instances and roll again. Uh -huh. Rumble! <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> wow. Yurka is lucky in every single way. That is he paid pretty... Off. More talk, he paid off pool of names. What? Yurka, are you just rolling in money? Oh my gosh. So, we haven't got actually that many streamers today, so it's quite possible that Yurka can win <laughs> again. Uh, oh boy. Alright, well, I don't... I usually like tr like to try and spread out stuff that people can only win one one like one RP prize uh, per torrent just because it feels like if one person ends up with everything it's kind of very dissatisfying for everybody else. So I don't know. Let's tempt fate. I think it's too much for a meme if if Yurka wins. <laughs> yeah. All right, die zombie fool wants us to keep him in. Let's do it. All right. Uh, do you want to count us in? This is almost certainly have to be reroll. Ooh, okay. Okay, everyone. Let's get ready to roll in three, two, one. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh, that's a pretty good. Uh -huh. Thank you, thank you very much. Ooh. All right, yeah, we're gonna have to re-roll it. All right, Mickey, could you give us a one? One. Uh -huh. All right, will Yurka take every prize it's possible to take? No. no, unfortunately <laughs> not. Dogway is our RP winner. Dogway, congratulations. Uh, wait, what's Dogway actually called on here? Because I actually can't find them. 
Let's see, user archive. Dogway is AKA. Uh, broad. Okay, that's not a very strong connection there. Uh, there we go. Dogway is our streamer RP winner. Okay, and last of all for our RPs is... We're going to do people who provided feedback today. So hopefully it's something at least somewhat constructive. <laughs> we shall see. All right, could you count us in for our RP giveaway for today? Oh, I need to think of, I need to think of a voice to do for that one. Another, another. Let's go in three, two, one. Amazing. I wasn't expecting the Shakira, but I'm glad to be told about it. And it will be... Oh, oh, no, it's, I always ticked over to the Dying Zombie Pool, but it's going to be a doy. A doy, thank you for your feedback. Let's go and check out what that feedback was. Our feedback winner, congratulations. I'll do a quick export on this to read what the responses are. And let's see, so a doy's feedback was... Uh, would it? How feasible would it be to vary tournament times? Hmm. Adoy. Um, I assume you mean in maybe making it a little bit later on. Uh, I I think it could potentially be. Hmm. Yeah. Send, send me a send me a DM about that. Hey, Grand Vault. Welcome to the stream. Right. So now let's reveal our placements for today. So let's uh, let's do them in fives. I'm glad that no one just like changed the uh changed this back from being black. So, from the very bottom, we have Orieta in 30th place, X Steep in 29th, Pills in 28th, Simply Cap Girl and Simply Magic in 26th. Do you want to take the next five? Yeah, sure. Let's go. Do it. Wow. Yeah. We have uh Allison, Fatality Gaming, Wildio. Inarous, uh, Bizzo, VDJ, and Adoy. Ah, uh, yes, Adoy. Fortunately, you got the win anyway. Let's uh, let's start speedy up as we go up. Uh, so in 18th we saw Puddy, who we saw before G4 E4 EU G4 EU West. We saw playing the Mirage before Krehua. Of course, we got a lot of entertainment for Die Zombie Four, who did do well. Kinky Jew Uwu, returning it from last week. Oh, last time as a champion in 14th place. Read w TWI Noku, Elvin, who we saw a lot of in the chat, Tinker, and Dogway, who of course is one of our winners. And uh, do you want to take us through to our top, up to top four? Yes, so in eighth place we have D Wolf, in seventh place we have XY Storm, or is it Zy Storm? No idea. In sixth place it's uh, Blue. In fifth place we have 9096, and in fourth we have Buggo. All right, let's alternate these ones now. In third place, we have Eat My Post <laughs> with 19 points. Uh, though that is tied with Buggo, so uh, let's see. So number of firsts is the same. Number of seconds is the same. Number of thirds is the same. Number of fourths is the same. So Eat My Post does win the tiebreaker, so they are ahead of Buggo. Uh, let's see if the tiebreakers will mess us up for second. Who's it going to be, Deadliest? It is going to be average tryhard with 21 points, two firsts and one fourth in, in that second second round, actually denying uh, the perfect score for for uh, our uh, tournament uh, winner. Who I seem to have forgotten who he is. Can you remind us, Counterfeit? It is. Do 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 do. Yaka with a first, first and second place finished out two clear points. Ahead with 23. So I'd like to take a chance to shout out. I think Yaka's just got on and started playing another game. <laughs> uh, the, we'll true, shout out the true mindset of a grind. And he already has a Shio you again. Come on. How disgusting. <laughs> uh let's let's do the shout out command properly. Uh, let's shout out Yuck Yaka, uh, Yuck Rune. You can show them some love across there. <laughs> uh, they're providing their stream for us today. So that means that we need to just get all of our... Uh, let's see, so who was our... Uh, our streamer winner? No, we had streamer feedback, so we've got all of them. So we need one more player who is going to pick up the random little legend. So 
Let's see. So we've got Yurka. Yurka is first place winner. Our average tryhard is second place winner. And then let's grab everybody who's not them and stick them into the wheel of names for one more little legend egg. Would you mind counting us in for the final time today? Oh, gosh. Voices. Uh, okay. Well, let's do it. Let's do this one. All right. Her champions, get ready to go in three, two, one. Oh my gosh, you're doing a great job today on these voices, I have to say. And it's gonna be just taking across the dogway. Oh my gosh, what a controversial result! RP and a little legend winner as well. Congratulations, dogway. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the was it, Bronski? No, uh. What's that? Uh, oh, broad. That's right. Abroad, yeah. I think I need a microscope to see the the distance the distance between uh, Dogway and Dewolf there. Oh my gosh! So that brings us to an end here today. We will be back for our next tournament in two weeks' time. That's on the twentieth. Fortunately, the maths there is pretty straightforward. So what we do need to do is find ourselves a new TFT friend to go hang out with. Uh, let's see. So looking for someone ideally, I think I've set, yes, I think my tag set English. We do want someone who actually speaks English. Um, do we just want to go to our tournament winner? Eh, I, I like to try and find someone new we haven't come across before, though. Definitely do go check out Yoko if you're in a uh, longer term. How about, um, hmm, hmm, uh, Jeep 9999, yeah, sure. uh, chill gameplay apparently, are they still, just to check they're still live, uh, oh no, pretty sweary, all right, never mind. <laughs> I can usually tell if someone is pretty swearing because they swear the second I look at their stream. Uh, Dobby got PG. Dobby got biceps though. Uh, I mean that's a great name, and they look like they need more followers. So let's go check out Dobby got biceps. All right, so Mother let's. has given Dobby biceps. Dobby is a free elf. All right. Well, this is for mature audiences as well, so do bear in mind. But yes. Uh, we're here to spread some love around. Again, we'll be back on the 20th, so that's two weeks' time. For now, though, we're going to go ahead across to Dobby Got Biceps. Please feel free to tell them about the competition as well, if you've got time. For now, though, thank you guys so much. Thank you to Deadly Ghost. I'll put Deadly's Twitter into the chat, if any of you guys would like to drop them a follow. I'm sure uh, that would be very much appreciated. Deadly, anything you'd like to shout out before we go? Uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm... I do bad memes. Uh, I joke a lot, but thank you to, to the Counterfeit for having me, uh, having me. Congratulations to all of the winners. Congratulations to Yurka. And uh, I hope uh, I get to see everyone uh, in the in the next tournament. And uh, I might just drop in and play. Take take off Yurka's uh, championship crown. <laughs> oh, yes. And I'm noting it for Tality on stream. Uh, but the... Okay, no, Fatality legitimately did provide a proper explanation for what they were playing. I thought they were memeing. Uh, the <laughs> oh my gosh, Fatality, good job. I think we're going to get out of here just to get done a little bit faster. But good job, Fatality, on trying to make it work. Let's go check out Dobby Got Biceps, and we'll see you guys in two weeks' time. Oh my gosh, I saw something deeply appropriate in Dobby's chat literally the second that we were going to cross there. So, uh, great. Mm.